All right, we are live. How's it going, everyone? Let me adjust my, put my microphone on here. Make sure you guys can hear me okay as you guys are slowly jumping on here. So today is, what's today, the 12th? I believe it's the 12th. Maybe it's the 13th already. 12th, 13th, who knows? Just want to welcome everyone today. We're going to have some fun painting this awesome hummingbird to my right. Okay, I'm going to give you guys a little time to jump on. Let's see here. All right, cool. Let's see who the first comment's going to be. As you guys jump on, please let me know uh, that you can hear me okay. Let, give me a sound check. Everything's reading good on my end. However, I never know until somebody says, hey, Jesse, we can hear you okay. So if you guys could let me know. Let's see who the first person to uh, give me a comment on here is. All right. Let's see. All right. Slowly adding people. Waiting for that first comment. Waiting for the first comment. Who's going to be first? Who's going to be first? Let's see who we got. <laughs> Nobody yet. Or somebody. There's a, I know there's a little bit of a delay. Here we go. First comment was from Cheryl. How's it going, Cheryl? From Minnesota. How are you? Fantastic. Sanjita says, yes, we can hear you. Tracy Micah says, what are the gold stars? Gold stars are just a way to help support the channel. It's a way of donating. Um, basically, it's you can buy stars through Facebook, and then you can donate those to, um, to pages that you follow, videos. I think it's primarily on videos. So, And that's what that is. Okay, awesome. Fantastic. Amaryllis says, I would like to paint, but I'm doing errands. Rewatch later. Have nice time painting. Awesome, Amaryllis. No worries. Come on back. What's happening, Marla? Welcome back, Marla. How are you? Donna Purcell is back from Nova Scotia. What's happening, Donna? Melissa Childress Brown. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Hope everyone else is doing amazingly today. So we're going to get started here in just a little bit. Got a few minutes before 3 o'clock. Okay, of course, it's going to give everyone a little time to uh, to jump on. I don't know how much of a crowd we're going to have today. Every anytime I do any time that I do one of those pre prep videos, it seems like I have a a lower attendance on the lives. Maybe because people don't get a chance to uh, actually do the pre prep. And I apologize. I um I meant to update the pre prep video, uh, load the pre prep video over a week ago, but things get really really crazy busy. I've been super busy doing all kinds of stuff, planning all sorts of cool things for the page, and of course being busy with my life and everything else, all the other aspects of my life, that I didn't have a chance to get it up until yesterday. And then there's always, so I try to upload the live video directly to the event page so that those of you that are following the event and the, not the notifications that come up can simply see the video right there. But for some reason, it's always a big struggle. Uh, so I have to, so yesterday I actually had to post it on the, on the main painting with Jesse Facebook page and then post the link in the event tab or the, one of the tabs on the event, uh, page itself. So you guys can go click on that and take you over to the, to the actual pre-prep. But anyway, anytime I do one of these pre, these pre-prep videos, video sessions, it just seems that the attendance is a little bit lower, uh, during the actual live, which is okay. All good. Right. I, we still have fun. Uh, makes it a little, a little bit more intimate, I think. Uh, I can I get a chance to see more of your questions. So anyway, all right. Who else do we got? Jill, how's it going? Jill Gillespie Green, how are you, Jill? Welcome back. Thank you for hanging out with us today. Ruth Davis. Jacqueline says, "Hi, Jesse. Watching from Florida. What's happening, Jacqueline? All the way out in Florida, Joshua." Hello to you, my friend. Yes, Marla. So, on this, uh, so for those of you that are new to the page or maybe don't have a lot of experience hanging out with us, uh, painting along with some of our sessions, these videos are recorded. Okay. Um, during the live sessions, we broadcast both to Facebook and to YouTube. For those of you that like to pause the video, back it up. Uh, you know, slow it down or watch it at your own pace during the live, you're going to want to watch this on my YouTube page, which is basically painting with Jesse, basically saying exact same name is, is here on Facebook. Facebook live does not allow you to back up <clears throat> or even pause and that kind of stuff. So 
Again, if you're interested in being able to uh, pause it as you go along with the live and maybe jump back ahead, back it up, et cetera, you want to watch this on YouTube. You start, and you still have a little time to get over and watch it there if you'd like. In either case, the video is being recorded and it will be saved to both platforms, Facebook and YouTube. So you can actually uh, watch it immediately after. You can watch it tonight. You can watch it on the weekend, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so yes. For those of you that are interested in watching this later, just know that you will get a chance to do that uh, whenever you'd like, okay? And if for those of you that are you know, listening to me right now, if you see the question pop up as it will pop up during the actual live session once we get going, somebody will jump on and say, hey, can I watch this later? Please help me by uh, responding to them if you could. I can't, oh, I don't always get a chance to respond to every question. I sometimes miss questions, so if you could, Please let them know that, yes, absolutely, Jesse says the video is recorded on the Painting with Jesse page here on Facebook. At the main uh, page at the very top, there's a tab that says live. You would simply go there, click on that, and you'll see this and all the previously recorded videos. We've got over 90 of them, so if any of, your, of you are interested in going and checking out the library, go there. Not now. Go, go there afterwards, and you'll check out a bunch of really cool videos. What's happened, happened Carolyn? Welcome back, Shannon Elaine, how's it going? Evelyn Road, all the way from Australia. What time is it out there, Evelyn? What time is it in Australia right now? I know it's either really, really early, early in the morning, like I'm talking like 3 a.m. or 2 a.m. or something like that, or it's like 7 a.m., 8 a.m., I can't remember. I know there's a really big time difference. But anyway, thank you for being here, welcome. I don't know if you're painting with us right now or just kind of stopping by to say hello, but um, thank you for being here. Wanda Jean, yeah, it's been a minute. I saw I saw your name just now as I was glancing through there. And uh, I remember you used to come back, come and paint with us. So hopefully you're getting a chance to do a little painting. I know things are opening back up and people are getting busy with their lives, uh, with their lives. And so don't get a chance to paint as much. What's, what's up, Don Wax? How are you? All the way from Minnesota. Thank you for coming back. Fantastic. So anyhow. Got where we are at 301. Let's get going. We're going to talk about supplies here before, but before we do that, let me take a little drink of water before my uh, voice dries out on me. But we got next week, and I, I don't remember the date at the moment. I believe it's next Thursday. We're going to paint this awesome sunflowers piece sitting behind me. Okay, this one right here. Next week. So for those of you that um, are looking for something fun to do next week, that's a live tutorial here on Facebook. Go over to the event page here on Painting with Jesse and you'll get all of, all of the details, okay? So hopefully some of you guys come back and join me for that. But all right, let's talk about today and what we're going to be doing as far as our supplies. I'm really excited because some of you have already sent me some pictures of things other than canvases that you're going to, be, going to be painting on. Somebody posted a picture on the event page of their backyard fence, it looks like. They're going to paint these hummingbirds on their wooden fence. So can't wait to see that. And then somebody sent me a picture on Messenger of a birdhouse that they painted the hummingbirds on. So I'm really excited to see what you guys are going to be doing with this. So do not forget, when you're all done, please send me pictures of your, uh, of your paintings. I love to see those. You can send them to me here on Painting with Jesse. Again, via Messenger on Facebook. If you're on YouTube, email those to me at paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. Exactly how the name is spelled on Facebook or YouTube. That's exactly how you spell the name for my email. You just add gmail.com to the end of that. Jesse, I'm sorry, paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. All right. Okay. Let's get going, folks. Sorry if I clapped in your ear. I got the microphone right here and I sometimes like to clap. I get a little too exuberant and I uh, might be popping some of your eardrums. So I do, ap do apologize about that. Let's talk about our supplies here. I'm gonna be painting on this 16 by 20 inch canvas. Basically it's the same size as, as the original. Some of you choose to paint on different types of surfaces, wood, wood boards, canvas boards, mixed media, paper pads, whatever it is that you're doing this on. Have fun with it, okay, make it your own. Uh, again, I'm painting on a 16 by 20 inch canvas. If, you're, if your surface is a different size, of course, you would just have to adjust, right? 
You do want to have the pre-prep drawing part of this all done. If you guys don't have this, you guys are jumping on here going, well, wait, we already have it drawn out. There's a pre-prep video available for you to go watch. Uh, it's already posted to the Facebook page, so go check that out. It's not on the YouTube page yet, so I do apologize if you're watching this on YouTube. Unless you've already got the pre-prep video done, uh, you'll, you'll want to come and find or the pre-prep video stuff done. Uh, pre-prep live video stuff done, you'll want to go to Facebook and watch the video to get your drawing done. Uh, or you'll want to send me an uh, email to get the stencil uh, sent out to you. Anyway, so drawing part of it is all done already. I've got a, a bunch of different colors that I'm going to be using today. I'm painting with acrylic paint. Some of you I know are doing this in watercolors. Some of you like to do this with, with colored pencils, pastels, etc., etc. Absolutely perfectly fine. Before I get into the colors that I'm going to be using, let's talk about the brushes. The brush selection is just a suggestion. Some of you are going to be using variations of these, and that is perfectly okay. I've got a big one-inch flat brush, okay? One inch refers to the width, okay, nice and thin at the top. These are all Taclon bristle brushes, synthetic bristle brushes. This large brush, when we get to the background, this is what I'm going to primarily be using for that background. Okay, big brush. This is not going to get any use till much further into the session. We're going to be painting the hummingbird first. The next brush that I've got is a half inch flat brush. Okay, a little half inch. Uh, I'll be using this to paint some of the colors on the inside of our hummingbird, maybe the calla lily down here. Okay, but that's a half inch flat brush. Then I've got a number eight flat brush, actually, pretty close in size to that half inch. Same thing, details, um, you know, perhaps the leaves, et cetera, okay? Then I've got a number four. I know I posted a number five for the uh, Filbert on the supplies list. This is a number four, close enough. If you've got a number six, number three, number five, it's all good. This is the brush with a nice rounded edge at the top. Let me see if I can give you guys a close up. This is good for working in areas like rounded edges. Okay, it's also good for making pointed edges, straight lines, things like that, okay? So that's that. And then I've got two round brushes. They don't look that much difference in size. There is a little bit of a difference. I've got a number five round brush, okay? Nice and pointy, good for detail work, good for outlining, okay? When we do the little outline like up on here uh, on the uh, hummingbird, also in between the wings, that's what we would use. Then I've got a number zero round brush, basically the same thing, just a smaller version. Don't get too caught up on trying to have the exact supplies. Again, as long as you've got something close, you're okay. Lots of times during our sessions, I get people going, oh my gosh, you know, I don't have a number three or number five or number one of whatever the brush is. As long as you're close, you're fine. Okay, these are always just a suggestion to create this. You can use a variety of different types of brushes also, and it would still give you some similar results. These are generally the size brushes that I like to use for my paintings. But um, again, the sizes don't, if they're slightly different sizes, um, you're fine. Okay, I do have paper towels. They come in handy. I've got a big old paper towel roll over on the other side here. We use this, this to clean up messes, to clean brushes in between steps, etc. I have a rinse cup. Okay, in between steps, I rinse out my brushes in here. The last thing that you want to do is you want is, is leave your uh, brushes uh, with paint on them sitting next to you. They can dry out and that can permanently damage your brushes. I then I also have a little container here. I use a little tin. Um, there's, it's got water in it. In once I've rinsed my brushes, I plan on using them again in between steps. They lay in that water, but they lay sideways, somewhat slide sideways at an angle. So it keeps pressure off of the bristles and it makes my brushes last a long time. Let's talk about the colors. Again, I mentioned already that I'm working with acrylic paint. We're gonna start, when we start, we're gonna start painting the hummingbird first. Okay, we're, there's a lot of little details in here, a lot of little subtle things in there that we're gonna be uh, working with but the colors that I'm going to be using are on this palette. I've got a couple of greens in here. Don't stress if you don't have a couple of different greens. I've got a lighter green and then I've got kind of a medium green color. 
you can lighten up your green with white or darken it a little bit with a, a touch of blue or a touch of black. Uh, but don't stress about that too much. Whatever colors you've got are perfectly fine. I've got a light blue here, and then I've got a darker blue. If you don't have a darker blue, don't stress. You can lighten up whatever blue you have with a little bit of white. I've got purple, okay, and then I've got, of course, white. I've got some pink and some red. I'll be mixing those up a little bit to create kind of a similar color to what's in here. Uh, and then I've got some black for the details in the eyes, maybe the outlining down in the foot. I'll be mixing a little bit of black and some white to create the colors for the beak and for the feet, okay? So these are the general colors that I'll be using. Please feel free to customize your painting uh, to taste whatever it is that you wanna do with yours. It's perfectly fine. Everyone's painting is going to look different in the end. If you do this freehand or if you use the stencil, you know, again, I wanna emphasize everyone's piece is going to look a little different and that's part of the fun, all right? So, if you guys are all ready to go, let's do this, okay? We're going to go ahead and, like I said, we're going to start painting um, the inside of the, we're going to start painting the, the hummingbird first. So, really quickly, I do have other paint colors next to me. I might get creative throughout the process and change some, some things up. I don't know yet. Of course, we've got a dark green for the leaves up here. If you only have a light green, that's perfectly fine. Um, and then, of course, the, we got a little bit of yellow in here for the calla lily, the center. I'm going to be doing that in yellow. And I, I hope that I added that to the supplies list or that you caught that in the picture. There's a little bit of yellow in there. If you don't have yellow, you can use um, a little bit of green in there instead. But, you know, or you can always add the yellow later. It's a very small detail. Uh, but that little center of the you know, little, I think it's called a pistol that's coming out of the center there um, is in yellow. All right. So, okay, everybody. Uh, here we go. Let's get going. Let's see who else is on here. Just want to say a real quick hello to all of you. Let's see. Rosemary Alonzo, welcome back. And then we got Tiger Lily. How's it going? Christina from San Diego. What's up, San Diego? Love San Diego. Uh, uh, you guys are about an hour and a half south from me, so like to visit often. Uh, pretty awesome. And then Jessica Siegler says, I had a hard time drawing the stencil. It's all good. Uh, for uh, you want to push yourselves a little bit. Some of these things are going to be difficult, especially if you're newer to this stuff or you don't, you know, maybe your, your skills aren't quite where you want them to be. It's all about practice. It's all about having fun, enjoying the process. Little by little, the more you do it, you will start getting better at it. There's almost absolutely no reason uh, why that wouldn't be the case. Just, uh, you know, putting, making yourself a little bit uncomfortable is part of the process. What's happening, Penny? Welcome back, Penny. Hope you're painting with us today or that you'll get a chance to paint a little with us sometime later with a recorded session. But all right, everyone, here we go. Let's get, let's get moving here. Oh, let me change the, um, there we go. Now we got a much bigger view of the hummingbird and everyone can see what it is that's going on. All right, so what I'm going to start with is this green background. Okay, all of this green in here. Now, inside of this area, I've got, a couple of different shades of the greens that I'm using. I've got a darker green base and then I add a little bit of a lighter green over the top. If you've only got one green color, you can change the shading on that green. You can make it a little bit darker by adding a little bit of blue and you introduce your blue slowly. Okay, if you do add any other colors, make sure you introduce them to your green a little bit at a time. Now I have two plates on here that I'm using for palettes. I actually have more plates back behind me, but I like to mix. I like to use a separate plate to make my mixes on. Okay, right now I'm not mixing anything. I'm just taking my darker green. I'm grabbing my half inch flat brush. Okay, right, scooping it right up the paint right off of the palette here. And I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to come in and I'm going to outline everything. Now I want to spread this color. I don't want it thick. I want to use a little bit of paint and I want to spread it around quite a bit. Okay, now I drew my hummingbird in chalk. And what I'm doing is I'm coming right up to the outline where my chalk is, coming right up to it. Okay, now if I have a little bit of chalk out over the edge like I do over here, I'm not worried about that. When I do my background, I'm gonna paint right over that and it's gonna eliminate that. But if, I, if when I'm all done painting, I have a little bit of chalk peeking through here and there, 
that's an easy thing to clean up. Once everything is dry, I'll just go in there and take a, a lightly damp paper towel or cloth and I will um, wipe that right off. Now, notice I'm leaving this part in here a little bit. Uh, I'm leaving this area white. I'm not painting over that. I'll explain why in just a little bit. I will be adding some more paint in there. But for now, again, what I'm doing is I'm just taking a little bit of paint and I'm spreading a thin layer. It's, it's a pretty transparent layer of green. Okay, I want it to be transparent. I don't want this layer to be thick. Because I'm going to be adding other greens over the top, other shades of green, um, I want this layer to be transparent because it'll be easier for the paint that comes later to make an impact. So spread your paint. If it's too thick, let's say you grabbed too much paint on your brush and you spread it on and you're like, you got gobs of paint on there. Simply take a paper towel, scoop up some of the paint with your brush and go like this. Or scoop up the paint and, and use the edge of whatever you're using as a palette to take that off, right? Again, we want this layer to be nice and thin, transparent even, where by making it so thin, we lighten up we lighten it up. We actually create a bit of a lighter green by doing that. Okay, so right up in here, comes down to the tail. Between the feathers down here, the tail feathers, come down. Again, nice and, uh, nice and thin layer of paint. Right here around the eye. I want to leave a little bit of space for the red or pink that's going to be between this little band between the, the beak and the eye. So just to look, the reason why I'm doing this is I don't want that red to mix or have to contend with the, the green that's on here. So kind of gauge about how thick you want that band to be and leave a nice little opening, little, little area in there where you're going to add some of that red. Okay. You don't have to do that for the black and you don't have to do it behind the eye. You can if you'd like. I do have a little bit of red coming back behind there. This hummingbird isn't necessarily going to look exactly like that. They're going to be pretty close. Then I want to do this back wing, right? Same thing. Really small amount of paint. Not, uh, don't need a whole lot here. Just going to come in here and we're going to do this. Okay. Take a little step back. Make sure you've covered all your green area. So for those of you that are new here, please let me know in the comments section. Let us know, hey, new here, first time painting with you, Jesse. If you're really new to painting, don't worry. Just take, have fun. Everybody just have fun. That's the first rule of painting, according to Jesse. Have fun with it. Enjoy the process. Usually when you're relaxed and are just doing it for enjoyment, it's a lot easier to learn and to uh, grow. Okay. Put your critical side, tell it to go to sleep. Your critical mind, your, your, you know, your self-talk, tell that stuff to just take a little break. Okay. But all right, we're going to leave that. I'm going to let that dry for a little bit. Uh, in just a moment, we're going to move on to the next step. I'm going to give you guys all a little time to catch up. In the meantime, let me look at these comments. See if you guys have any questions. <clears throat> Diane says, first time. Welcome, Diane. Thank you for being here. So awesome. Pamidge, what's happening? Pamidge from Florida. We'll paint later. I just found the pre-prep. You got it. <clears throat> My pleasure, Pamidge. Thank you for hanging out. Hi, Adriana. How are you? Are you painting today or just coming, stopping by to say hello? And then Noella from Northern Manitoba, Canada. Hi, Noella. Kim says, hello, good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening, Kim. So um, a couple of things, guys. For those of you that are interested, I know a lot of you, so I get messages all the time uh, to my Facebook, sometimes to my email. People will say, hey, Jesse, I didn't, I didn't know you were painting today. I missed the live session. I'm not getting the notifications from Facebook. Um, you know, how do I keep up to date with your videos? So if you don't want to mess with the notifications on Facebook or for whatever reason, maybe your notifications are on, but you're still missing some of the po my posts when I, when I update the calendar for new events that are coming up. And currently there's like four, I think we've currently got 
three or four events that are on the schedule already. I'll be adding more to that, of course, very soon. Um, I think the schedule currently is up to date all the way through mid-June. If you guys are missing the notifications for those events here on Facebook, please be sure to get, if you'd like, this is only if you'd like, I, I'm creating an email um, newsletter. For those of you that want to get on that newsletter, simply send me an email to paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. Paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. Put on there in the header, say uh, email list, please, or something like that. Email list, newsletter, email newsletter, something along those lines so that I know to add you to the new, to the newsletter list once. Uh, every time. So, so what I'm going to do with that is every time I update the calendar, I will be sending out an email to everyone that's on that list. That way, you know what's happening, you know when it's happening, and you know to go. I'll have the link to the, in the newsletter, I'll have the link to the event page, so you can always just click on that, and it'll take you, and you'll find out all, all, all the details. No spamming or anything like that. I'm, I'm just wanting to make it easier for those of you uh, that are wanting to make sure you're getting your notifications. That's one way of doing that, okay? So once again, for those of you that are interested, paintingwithjesse at gmail.com is uh, where you want to send that email to. Um, okay, so let's talk about uh, Lynn Clev uh, Clevin. Welcome. First time. So the colors really quickly. Let me go over these again. These are the colors that I'm using for the hummingbird. Okay, let's start with the green. I've got two greens here. Don't worry about it. If you only got one green, you can change your green up a little bit by introducing a little bit of white to make a lighter shade. You can also just add a touch of blue or green to darken it, uh, sorry, blue or black to darken it just a little bit, okay? But I've got two shades of green. Right now, I just added the uh, lighter green or the darker green color to that top part of the hummingbird. Next color that I've got is some black for the detail work, for the eyes. I'm gonna create a gray by mixing black and white for the areas around the eye and, and then the feet. I've got a light blue and a dark blue. Light blue is mostly going to go in here. I'm, I'm probably going to mix that with some white to lighten it up a little bit. And then I'll mix a little bit with some dark blue to create this little darker shade in there. Um, I've got some red and pink that I'll be mixing to create a color that's similar to this one here. Uh, I've got purple. That's going to go in there in between the feathers. Of course, I've got white. Um, and it feels like I'm missing a color that I didn't, I didn't talk about a particular color. but. Uh, Oh, glitter, folks. I did not talk about the glitter. For those of you that want to use glitter, uh, if you guys got, so for those of you that have glitter or that picked some glitter up at the very end, the hummingbird does have a really nice layer of glitter, the original one. Check that out. Lots of little glitter on it. This is glitter paint. I'll show you guys in just a moment what um, glitter I use for that. We'll talk about that just a little bit after the next step. Okay, but I do have glitter paint that I will be using. Well, give me a second. I'm going to block you guys a bit. There we go. All right. So here we go. Next up. But anyway, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, the glitter colors that I'll be using. Next step, same brush. Okay, I'm going to use the same brush for this. I'm going to clean it up a little. I'm going to take my brush. Again, you want to make sure that this layer that we just added is nice and thin. Spread that paint, spread that paint. Okay. Clean up my brush, swirl it around, swirl it around inside my rinse cup. I want to remove as much of that um, green as I can. It doesn't have to be completely, completely clean. But you can, and then you can also use, after you swirl it around in that couple, couple of times, use a paper towel to squeeze out that extra water that's in there. You don't want to leave a lot of water in there because as you're painting, you might get some drips. Some water will drip out, landing on areas that you don't want it to go. Next step, I've got a little bit of this light blue. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit. I don't need much. I am going to be using my mix plate. So light blue right in there. It's probably more than, the, than what I'll need. Okay, now I'm going to take some, uh, my same brush. I'm still using the same brush from earlier. I know I repeated that a couple times, but just in case. Bring some white over to my mix plate. Got some white. Now I'm going to take, I always do it this way. I'll take the lighter color and I'll introduce the darker color a little bit at a time until I get the color that I want. Going the opposite is a usually a little bit harder to do. Okay, you end up using more paint than you'll need. 
So a little bit of white, or sorry, a little bit of blue into the white till I get the light blue that I want. That's about the color that's on the hummingbird now. Again, I want to stress, everyone's hummingbird is going to be different, including, I know some of you are using completely different colors. Perfectly fine. It's your painting. Once you're happy with it, use whatever colors you'd like. But here we go. This is the light blue that I want. Whenever you're mixing colors, one of the main things you do want to make sure you do is that you mix enough to cover the entire area that you're going to cover in this color. You don't want to run out part way, then have to remix that color because that can be a little tricky to try to color, um, color match. So I'm just going to come in here and I come right up to the edge where the green is and then I come back the other way. Notice because I've got chalk, I can paint right over it. No problems, the paint covers it right up. I'm sure the, the chalk is, is mixing in with the paint a little bit and sometimes it'll I'll pull some away, but doesn't make much of a difference here. Can't really see that. So I paint right over my chalk edge. Okay, I'm gonna remove some of the paint, just a little bit, so I can then use the brush to spread the paint that's on the bird. Lots of really fun stuff coming up on this page. We've got the sunflowers next week. If you guys can see the sunflower painting behind me, it's probably really small on your screen right now. But we got that um, sunflower painting coming up next, I believe it's next Thursday. For those of you, the sunflower and bees painting right behind me here. I'll show you guys a close-up later for those of you that are just kind of jumping on right now. Okay, so there's that light blue. I'm going to take a little bit of a darker blue. Um, so I've got my I've got my shade of that blue right here, right? I actually already had some on my plate. I'm going to take a tiny bit of my darker blue. You can barely see it. I got got my got some on my little the corner of my brush right there, just a little tiny bit. I just want a slight, slight difference in between these two colors. Now I'm just going to take a little bit of this and right in, right in here in the corner or on the edge. Now it's going to mix in a little bit with the light blue underneath. It's going to make it a little lighter than what, what we're going to eventually have. That's okay. This is our first layer. Later on I'll come in here. Once this dries, we are going to come back and refine this a little bit more. I'm using just the the very edge of my bristles for now, or the very tip of the bristles, and just adding a little bit of this shade. Now, there's a little bit of a blending action that's happening because I'm painting wet on wet, right? The, the new color that I'm introducing is mixing with the color underneath. But it's a really subtle difference for now. It's much more prominent, prominent here. We'll make it a little more defined later. For now, that's all I really want. Let me give you guys a close-up. Here's what things are looking like right now. Okay. Thank you, Penny. Sounds good, Penny. Just send a uh, just send me an email, okay? Send in, send me an email over to Painting with Jesse so I can be sure to add you. I'm sure I'll remember. Penny wants to be on the uh, mailing list, but send me an email and I'll I'll put you right on that, okay? Uh, let's see, about another minute, folks, and we move on to the next step, okay? We're going to spend a lot of time on the hummingbird. This is a mo a more of a realistic painting, uh, a style of painting than what we've done in the recent sessions. There's a little more detail in here, uh, a little more refinement. So it takes a little bit of a buildup. Nothing crazy, nothing difficult. We're taking a lot of the lessons that we've learned over the months. For those of you that have been painting with me for a while, and don't stress if you're new to painting, Please don't freak out at what I'm saying. Um, but for those of you that have been painting along with me for a while, we're just kind of building on all those little techniques that we've learned along the way. Okay? Just going to create a, a slightly more realistic version of a hummingbird. Kind of like with, when we did the Cardinals or the Blue Jays a couple months ago. Okay? Martha Hicks. Sounds good. All right, guys. And then in case you haven't caught on to this, the way this works, I do a step over here. I give you a little time to implement it on your end. In between steps, I like to look at the comments. I answer questions. I say hello. For example, Bernie from New Wisconsin. Oh, new from Wisconsin. New Wisconsin. What state is that? 
from Wisconsin. How's it going, uh, Bernie? Welcome. Thank you for being here. Do appreciate it. Let's see. Lorette from Timmins, Ontario, Canada. Home of Shania Twain. Fantastic, Lorette. Welcome. Hope you're enjoying the session today. Okay. So I'm going to switch things up here. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. The brush that we've been using for now gets to take a little break. We're probably going to come back and use it again. But I'm going to use my, my uh, rinse cup here to clean it up. Okay. Now, I mentioned earlier that I've got a separate container here. It's got a little bit of water in there. I like to leave my brushes sideways like this. Puts less pressure on the bristles than if they're sitting straight up like that in, a, in the rinse cup. So I just kind of set, set it at an angle there. And then I just put this over to the side. And we're moving on. Now I'm going to be using my number eight flat. It's only a little smaller than the one that I was just using. Okay. Um, or I could also, for this step, I could also use my, my small uh, little number four filbert. Again, if you have a number five or number six, number three, it's all good. Uh, this We're going to be painting the sections, this section in here. You know what? I'm going to switch over to the filbert. What the heck? What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix a color for this area in here. Again, back to my mix plate. I grab some red, a little bit of red. Don't need a whole lot for this. Okay. And then I grab some pink, same brush, put it over to the side right here. Okay. Now this color, this color is somewhere in between these two. So I take a little bit of pink. I'm going to move it over to the side. And then I'm going to grab some red. Remember, uh, I introduced the dark color into the light color slowly. I think I'm going to be using a little bit more red. So I grab some more red for my plate. Bring it over. And here we go, mixing again. Now my color doesn't have to match the original exactly. I'm not worried about that. I just want to come close. I want to mix enough again to cover this area in here and then the tail feathers are a similar color. So let's go ahead and mix that up. Okay, it looks like about about the same amount that or about the amount that I'm going to need. I can just kind of do this to make sure they're pretty close and they are. Now I'm going to take this color. I like to do my outlining first. Makes it easier to stay within my lines. Now tell me, folks, I know I asked this in a poll last week, or maybe it was the week before. I think it was last week. Do you guys like the pre-prep videos first? Or do you guys like the pre-prep videos, or do you guys like to do this all in one shot? Here's, all, here's my take on this. I like doing the pre-prep because it allows me to do the drawing all in one step. It gives you guys all a little time to kind of refresh, especially if you're newer to drawing or if you struggle with it. You know, it might take you a little while to draw it. So what you, if I draw it first and have it ready for you guys, I can we can focus on just the painting part of it. It gives us more time to, uh, to focus on the painting. But let me know what you guys think. When I did the poll on Facebook, I got an overwhelming, we like the pre-preps, we like the pre-preps, but there were some people that said, I prefer, you know, all, all in one shot. Okay, the same color, I'm gonna switch brushes for, no, you know what? Same brush, I'm gonna come down here to the tail. Outline first. Now, here's what I'm gonna do with this. I have all these little, blue segments in between the feathers, right? These little lines that I drew in there. I'm going to paint in between those so I can see them a little bit. So that later when I come in with a darker, the darker outline color, I can see them and I can paint right over them. Okay, again, I wanna be able to see those. So I'm painting right in between them. Let me give you guys a close up. Okay, you guys see that? Now I'm not I'm not trying to go too quickly here. I want to take our want us to take our time. But um, if you guys start to fall behind, don't stress. As I've already mentioned, this video is being recorded and will be available for you to watch immediately afterwards, both on Facebook and on YouTube. If you guys are joining me on YouTube, please uh, leave a comment. Say hello. I'd like um, trying to grow the YouTube channel a bit. 
and um, any interaction over there will help with YouTube's algorithm. All right, so there's my tail. Okay. What's up, Gloria from Victorville? Another neighbor, except you're a little bit, um, what is it? Northeast of me, I do believe. Sounds good. Okay, Gloria says, I like to pre print, but I have enjoyed all in one shot because it helps to get better in drawing. Okay, fantastic. You got it, Patricia. Barbara Best Loman says, Hi, my first time with you. Love the subject. Fantastic, Barbara. Happy to hear and welcome to the page. Okay, so we got the tail. Now, what I'm going to do just for a moment. I'm going to take this little brush. I'm going to rinse it out a little. Okay, just going to rinse that out. I'm going to take it and move it over to my, my little tin over behind the behind my canvas so it rests on its side, right, or angled just like this. Okay. Now my little tin gets rusty. Not the best option to do this, but that's okay. Whenever I finish, I just go and rinse it out, clean it out, it helps uh, preserve it for longer. I'm gonna use my number three brush. Okay, my little number three round for this next step. Same color, we're gonna, we're gonna color in that red, reddish, it's almost like a fuchsia around, uh, around the eye. I used to, Back in, I don't know, somewhere in the two, early 2000s, I bought a, uh, an old Corvette, 1979 um, Corvette that I planned on fixing up. But I could drive it. It was drivable. Anyway, the color was, uh, it, was a, it had a custom color on it. It was, a, it was a, it's actually like a really dark fuchsia, but in certain when a certain light hit on it, it actually looked kind of pink. And I always wanted a Corvette. So I, I, you know, I got this Corvette and I was going to fix it up. But I remembered, you know, I'd be driving around and then somebody would mention, oh, why'd you buy a pink car? And I'd say, it's not pink. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's a, uh, what would I call it? It's a, it's a burgundy. Maybe, no, no, it's not burgundy. It's, it's pink. And I'd say, okay, it's, it's fuchsia. But this color, it was a darker color than this, but yeah, in certain light, it had this reflective quality. The paint had a reflective quality that uh, it did look pink, not gonna lie. So yeah, some people jokingly would mess with me saying that I was driving around in a pink car, which is nothing wrong with that. But uh, yeah, I would get a little, I would, I'm not gonna lie. I would get a little bit defensive and then I had planned on painting a block. I never got around to it, I eventually sold it. I did some, uh, I did fix it up a little bit, but then eventually sold it. A really cool car, either way. Anyhow, that color reminds me of my, my old Corvette. All right, let's see. Yeah, there you go. That's right, Gloria. Victorville. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Thank you for being here today. So do your little, you know, your little uh, detail around the eye there. And let's see what you guys got. You guys got about two minutes before we move on to that next step. Who else we got on here today? Don't forget, say hello in the comments. We don't have a really big group today. We got about, looks like we got about 58 people on. Please uh, give the, give, give me a, a like or, or something. Send me an emoji. Again, it helps with the algorithm. If you guys can, whether you're on Facebook or on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that heart button. Um, and it, it'll help share the video to, uh, with other people. It just kind of lets Facebook know, hey, and YouTube. People like this. So if you guys could, that'd be fantastic. What else do we got? Again, again, a nice little cozy group today. It allows me to read all your comments. How's it going, Angela? For, uh, on the Virginia Peninsula. Fantastic, Angela. Thank you for being here. All right. So here we go. Oh, Margaret Williamson from Mississippi. Hi, Margaret. 
Okay. So what is the next step? Great question. We're going to, as we're moving around the hummingbird, the areas that we have worked on are drying, right? We're moving along and that gives time for the other stuff to dry. What that allows us to do is it allows us to come back later and add other layers over the top of what we've done because we are going to layer this. There's going to be at least a couple of layers, uh, in some cases, three layers of paint that's going to go on top of this. And then, of course, for those of you that are going to be using glitter, that's the last layer that we'll be adding to everything. But as we're moving along here, uh, the previous layers will be drying. So, for example, the green part is all nice and dry right now. My red, pink fuchsia color that I created is also. Uh, starting to dry. So what we're going to do now, we're going to add a little purple area in between the wings. Now your color could be different, of course, but mine, my purple is essentially the same purple as what's on the uh, the background. I'm going to take, let's see, I'm going to take the same little brush that I was just using. No, let me back it up. I'm going to take my filbert brush, my filbert number four, this little guy right here, the same brush that I used to add the color to the chest and to the feathers at the tail and take some purple. Just gonna dip it right in. Don't need a lot. And right in here, I'm just gonna come in. Comes right up to the tip of the wing, to the edge of the wing, and it comes down like this. Comes around. Okay, it does this. If you're new to the page, Facebook or a new to the YouTube channel, I have, there are 90 or so, 90 some videos also, sorry, also back uh, to the wing in the background. I have over 90 art tutorials, probably like 94, 95, closing in on 100, getting there pretty fast. Started this back in August of, uh, sorry, not August, April of 2020. Lots of um, challenging pieces more like this. And then there are lots of kid-centric videos. For those of you that are interested, go check those out. The library is open. You can go view those whenever you'd like. On the main painting with Jesse Page here on Facebook under the live tab at the top, you click on that and you'll see the library of all the previous videos. Okay, if you guys are interested, go check those out. Okay, so got my little purple area right in between the green part of the wing and the lighter part. Now, what I'm going to do for this part of the wing, it's mostly white. I'm going to go ahead and get right into it, okay? So on my mix plate, I'm going to grab uh, same brush. Let's see, you know what? Uh, switching brushes here. I'm going to go to uh, my number eight flat brush. Okay, my little number eight flat brush. I'm going to grab some white, scoop up quite a bit of white. I'm going to bring that over to my plate. Okay, let's grab, let's grab a good amount of white, something like that. I'm going to add a little tiny touch of purple to this mixture. So I'm going to take some purple, I put it over to the side. I never grab the colors that I'm going to be mixing and put it and start mixing them immediately. I always put them side to side. Okay, because I don't know how much I'm going to, of either one I'm going to use. Then I'll take the primary color, in this case, white. Okay, and I just kind of bring it over to the center. And then I'm going to start grabbing a little bit of the purple. It's going to be a really, really light lavender, but it's like, uh, it's, it's almost an off-white. Okay, it's going to do that. Again, we mix enough so that we don't run out part. It's a little bit of a swirly color, meaning I can see a little bit of purple. I can see a little bit of white in there. It's not a complete even blend throughout. That's okay. Whoops, just dropped the gob of paint on my floor. It's all right because it's covered. Got a little floor covering there. But all right, once I've done this, I'm going to start with the back wing right in here. If you need a smaller brush for this part, please switch. Just because I'm using this brush doesn't mean you have to also use whatever you're comfortable with, especially if you've got some experience. You already know, you know what your favorite brushes are and what brushes go to what. If you're newer, as you start to paint, let's say you're using a particular brush and you start to paint and it feels too big for what you're doing, switch to a smaller one, okay? 
just coming through here and kind of like what I did with the feathers down here. I left, the, I'm leaving the little blue lines for each feather for the segments visible because I'm going to come in with a, with a darker color later and fill those in. Now watch this area here. I'm not so worried about it being really thin. This actually is a little bit of a thicker layer of paint. I want there to be a little bit of texture on here. And I create that by making the paint a little bit thick, laying it on a little thick. Now I'm using more of a flowy paint, okay? This paint is a little bit more liquidy. There's, there are different types of acrylic paints out there. Some are thicker, thick body paints. They're, um, there's more uh, of a viscosity to them, thickness to them. They don't, you know, if I hold them like this, these will start to run a little bit where the more thicker body ones are more like, um, how do I describe it? More like molasses maybe? A jam? I don't know. Something thick. They don't, they don't tend to move as much and they're, you're able to create more density with those, more, more dimension. But even with your flowy paints, your flowier paints, you can still brush them on thick. As long as they're not watery, you're going to get some, a layer, a level of thickness in there that will give dimension, texture to your paints. I'll give you guys a close-up a little bit. I know this is white over white, and you're not going to be able to see a whole lot. But maybe if I put the uh, canvas close enough to the video, you'll get a chance. But I'm scooping up the paint pretty thick on the brush. It's mostly towards the top. I try to avoid getting paint down towards the bottom, but not always an easy thing. The reason why I try to avoid it is because the paint can go inside, and um, it's one way to slowly or quickly, man, not that quickly, but it'll, it'll um, speed up the decline of your brush. So again, Laying paint down so that it's, uh, but I'm putting it, I still want to be able to see those divisions between the feathers. We will come back or likely come back and add another layer to this. I don't know that it'll need it, but we'll see. So here's the close up. Not sure if it's going to make a difference. There we go, maybe right there in the light, you can see there's some areas that are a little thicker than others, okay? It's random, I just, as I pick up paint with the brush and I put it on, there's gonna be a randomness to this as, as to how it, how thick or how thin it gets applied to the canvas, but that's what I want. I wanna use that randomness within the brush strokes, okay? Within the paint layer, but all right. Awesome, Lynn. Fantastic. Lynn from Wisconsin says, I'm watching it now, and then we'll, we'll go back on YouTube to paint. Uh, that is a fantastic idea. Often what I've noticed is people will come on and watch the live or just kind of, you know, they're doing whatever it is. They're doing something else, busy work, but they're watching, listening, and kind of getting an idea as to how the process goes, and then they'll come back and paint with a recorded session. Excellent way to absorb the tips, um, and then you're more easily able to apply everything when you come back and paint with a recorded session, okay? So that's one way, fantastic. Paula, second time watching from North Carolina. Hi, Paula. All right, guys, so work on that for a couple of minutes. Let me see if I can give you guys a close-up here of uh, the sunflower and bees planning, painting for next week. Next Thursday, let me let me blow the screen up a little bit. Okay, we'll be. Um, I will. I am planning on having a pre prep video for this sometime later this week, so you have plenty of time to draw this, draw out the sun, the sunflowers. Okay, we'll add the bees. For those of you that are going to be adding the bees, we'll add those during the live session. Okay, we'll draw those together during the live session. There's no stencil for this one. All freehand. 
you can do this. Okay. But that's going to be a really fun one. Really, really fun one. Okay. Ooh, Carrie Richard says, we're using pearlized watercolors. Love this hummingbird. Carrie, please make sure you send me a picture of that. I'd love to see that. I'd love, I would love to see that. That be that sounds like a fantastic medium to use for this. Uh, Lorette, so the blue lines were added during the pre-prep. Okay, during the pre-prep, I show you how to draw them. So I added those during the pre-prep. When I, we drew everything from scratch, okay? And all those little lines are the, you know, just the feathers, little divisions in between the wings. If you, uh, if you need to add them now, it won't take very long. Just, you know, just little lines that go out towards the edges. Doesn't matter if they're identical to mine. They could be a little different. No big deal. So I'd say if you don't have them, go for it now. And, um, or you can add them with the paint later. Once this layer dries, when you see me outlining everything, you can add them then. Okay. Not super crucial. Nice little effect, right? It makes it look, uh, it's a little bit of a neat addition, but um, don't stress about it too much. Add those if you'd like as we paint, or you could simply stop and then watch the pre-prep video, add them, and then come back and paint over that. You could always even leave the wings alone for now, paint everything else, paint around them, and then come back and add those divisions later, and then add the paint to that later, okay? Awesome, Carrie, sounds good. But all right, everyone, let's move on. So what do we need next? We need to work on our beak. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a gray. Now, uh, you could use a small flat brush for this. If you had a really small flat brush, and I do have one over here, we're not going to use it since I didn't put it on the list. But something like this, okay, with a really skinny edge, okay, you could use that to paint the inside of your beak, okay? It's actually pretty easy, even though some people go, hey, that's too big. Not if you're using just the skinny edge of your brush. You would use that to add the paint to the inside. And in many cases for many people, this is easier than trying to fill it in with something like this. This, it's a little harder to keep a straight line with this than it is with this. Once you use this, you press it against the canvas and you come across that creates a really nice straight line. Okay, so just a tip in case you guys would rather try to use this um, with, with your painting. Like I said, I didn't put that on the details list, so we're not using that today, or I'm not. Okay, mix plate, a little bit of white. Let me grab some more white. I'm running low over here, so let me grab some more white paint. So this, this white paint that I'm using right now is Real basic flowy paint called Flow Acrylic from Artist Loft. Okay, I picked this up at Michael's. Um, that bottle, normal price is about $9.99. And on sale, you can sometimes get them for 40% off, 20% off, sometimes even 50% off. But it is a good paint to use. It's uh, semi glossy, semi, really uh, versatile paint, in case, in case some of you guys are interested. So, my little my little, uh, actually I'm gonna switch to, this is my zero, yeah, I'll stick with my zero. This is my zero round brush. I'm gonna grab some white. Okay, I don't need a lot. I'm gonna bring some over to my plate. Now I'm gonna take, same brush, little bit of black. Don't need a lot. I have a little tiny bit of black right here. You'll see that very small amount. Now what do I do? Bring that white over. I introduce a little bit of that black. I want a nice gray color. A beak doesn't have to be a perfectly even color. It can vary a little bit. In other words, as I paint across it, it can have some subtle shades in there. So I'm going to start from the very tip of the beak. Oh, one tip. If you spread the brush in the paint like this, pressing down against the plate or whatever you're using as a palette, it makes the tip skinnier, makes it smaller. It makes it so that you can work smaller areas with smaller areas. And the other thing is this, dip your brush. Once you've got your mixture done, you dip your brush in the water cup. There's water in that brush tip now and I bring it over and I blend that in with the paint. I may do that a couple of times. Now that extra little bit of water 
blend it in really nicely, is going to allow that paint to spread onto the canvas a little bit easily, more easily. Here we go. Start from the tip, working my way backwards. There's no paint here. I can place my palm right up against the canvas, helping me stabilize my hand. As I work my way back, and I'll demonstrate it here in a moment, I start with the very tip of the bristles, so the point is really small. I start working my way back, and I start to press the brush. Whoops, whoops. Let me grab that. Almost landed on my pants. From experience, I, I knew to move my leg out of the way, <laughs> or else I would have had to clean up my pants, although these are my paint pants. I'd like to keep them as clean as I can. So, so again, on the way back, start to press down, 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 making, as you press the brush down, you make the bit, you make so that more of it is in contact with the canvas. It spreads the bristles a little bit, so you're able to make thicker lines. Again, it's nice and, you're barely touching the tip. Back over here, you work your way back. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it from the side so you can see, but normally I'm right up on top, right? But you come back, as you start to work your way back, you start to press down on that brush broadening the base and allowing you to make for thicker uh, a thicker uh, line. So I'll do that again. Just want to clean this up a little bit, clean up my edges. I can also work the other way. Press down from the from the base, work as I work my way out, I start to slowly lift the brush away from the canvas, making the contact point a little smaller, 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 smaller. When I get to the edge, I just lift up at the very end, okay? Hi, Barbara. It sure will. The video uh, will be available both on Facebook and on YouTube. The recorded session of this, you can come back and watch it whenever you'd like, okay? All right. For now, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm not going to add any more color to the beak. I will come back and add another layer over the top. I want that to dry a little bit before I add more to it. Since I'm working with this gray, I'm going to go ahead now and take some more black, bring it over. I'm going to make a dark, almost black color. This is what's going to go right here behind the beak and over the eye. It's a really dark gray. Remember folks, have fun with this. Don't stress yourself out. Okay, I know some people really want to create some, you know, we stress a little bit. I do too sometimes while trying to make something really nice, you know. But I've found over the years that the best thing to do is simply to relax. Enjoy the process and let your brain sort it all out. With experience and practice, you're going to get better. There's almost no way you cannot. Some people are going to improve more slowly than others, but that you will improve, that's okay. And there's no... We're not competing. We're, we're just on our, you know, our own timeline. Have some fun with it. All right. There's my color, really dark gray. I'm going to use this. I'd just like to remind you guys not to stress, stress throughout the process. I know um, some of us tend to stress a little bit more than others. Just, uh, just relax. Try to turn off that part of your brain. Right here around the beak. Of course, you can make it as big as, as big or as small as you'd like. I am covering up all my uh, chalk lines in here. If I want to bring this back a little further into the red, I can. I'm also going to take this color and I'm going to paint over the top of my eye. Now. If you guys notice on the original, let me give you guys a close-up of this because this is a cool little effect. Whoops. This is a, a cool little effect. I'm going to try to do this again right now. It's just a little tricky since I'm painting over from the side. So there's a little tiny area between the eye, the black part of the eye, and the area right above it, the dark area above it. That little tiny edge over, that light, light edge gives your eye a bit of a realistic, um, kind of like a reflection or, or just gives it a little bit of dimension. It gives it a little bit of realism. What you want to do 
Just be, be aware if you want to create that same effect. Wherever the black part of your eye is going to be, you're going to want to leave a little bit, little bit of separation. So actually, I'm going, to, I'm going to back up a little bit. Instead of doing the gray part over the eye, I'm actually just going to do the black part first. So it gives you a better idea if you're trying to attain that same kind of look where your black edge is going to be. So I just cleaned up my brush a little bit, still using my number zero brush here. I'm going to scoop up some black. Okay. And then again, especially if you're working with a thicker paint, you want to introduce a little bit of water to it. Just finding a spot on my plate. I could have used this area over here, but what the heck, I put it over there. I then dip my brush into the water cup. Adding a little bit of water to my paint, making it easier to work with. I swirl the brush against the plate, making that tip a little bit skinnier. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to outline my eyeball first. I'm going to outline the eyeball with the idea that I've got this little white edge that peeks around it. Okay, so I'm going to leave a little separation in there between the green, the red, just a touch. Now, if you, when you painted with your green or your red, you came right up to your eye area, right up to the edge of your eye, then you'll want to take a little tiny bit of white and just paint a little tiny edge around it. Again, if you're looking for that same type of a finish, don't worry about it. If This is just for those that want. And now I'm going to go through and, fin and fill in. Oh, sorry. Let me give you, this is what it looked like when I just did the outline. Okay, the outline of the eye. Then I'm going to come in here and fill that in. If I leave it like that, it actually looks like it's looking over at you guys. <laughs> Look at that. If I leave it like that, it's looking, it's looking at you. So here we go. Just the very point of my bristles. So little tiny subtle things that make a really big impact in a painting. Now I'm going to scoot in a little tiny bit. Hopefully I don't block you guys too much so I can focus on making the eye nice and round. All right, there we go. So again, a little bit of a white edge around my eye, the white of the canvas peeking through. I can always add a little bit of white around that to, to um, emphasize it a touch. And I might do that, we'll see. Okay, so work on that for a moment. You guys got about a minute. Look at everything. I know some of you guys are trying to catch up. You guys got about two minutes here to catch up and then we move on to the next step. What do you guys got for me? What's happening in the comments section? So Jessica says, how did, asks, how did you make the dark gray? So a little bit of black and a little bit of white. More white than black. Oh, hang on a second, folks. Let me make sure I'm plugged in over here to my power. It looks like, am I plugged in? Yes, I am. Okay. That was a little scary. It looked like I was losing power for a moment. Just my vision going on me. I need to get me uh, to get me some glasses. Uh, there you go, Penny. That's right. You just want to, you just want to relax. And I know that it's difficult it's, it's easier said than done for a lot of us. I get it. You know, um, sometimes some people work by putting themselves, work a little bit better at putting, them, putting some pressure on them, on themselves. But again, I just, just from experience over the years of teaching people how to paint, I've found that the more you relax to a limit, uh, you, you, you tend to paint a little bit better. You tend to be more experimental. You, you, you um, tend to just go for it. Take, take some chances a little bit. It is how you will learn more quickly, in my opinion. Okay. Judy Barrow says, hummingbirds are my favorite. Awesome, Judy. Lots of people uh, like uh, hummingbirds. 
Angelo and Elon, I think you posted the link to the uh, pre-prep. Thank you so much. Let's see. Li Livy Fleming says, I watch two or three times before I paint anything. I have already done two, the horses and the patriotic sky. My oldest son took patriotic sky home with him the other day. The oldest son just got out of the army after one term because he wanted to see his sons grow up. His son grow up. He will be two years old this year. Uh, the youngest son is in the Middle East, so it's special to my son. Thank you for the tutorial. Livy, thank you. My absolute pleasure. Thank you, thank you for that, uh, for that message. I love that. I love that. Or maybe, or sorry, Angelo, maybe you posted where the where the stencil is. So Taylor, if you look in the comment section, I believe Angelo posted where this where you'll find that stencil. Okay. Sure. I will hold the eye a little bit closer. Here you go, Don. Okay. Let me give you a little close up there. Guadalupe, how's it going from Oregon? Yep, this is a perfect painting to do, to do on a weekend where you relax a little bit. Whoops, I was tilting the, so there's the eye, okay? Yeah, perfect painting to do on the weekend where you get to relax a little bit, maybe enjoy something to drink, some snacks, maybe you paint it with friends or family, etc. You got it done, my pleasure. Okay, here we go. Let's move on, let's move on. Again, folks, I know everyone paints at a different pace. Some of you are a little faster. Some of you are a little slower. Some of you want me to speed things up. Some of you won't want me to slow things down. Okay? Just do your best to stay uh, up with me. If you're too fast and you're like, nope, I'm not, I don't want to stick around and wait for Jesse to, to do his thing. Or if, you're, if you get too far behind, you can always watch this with the recorded session. Okay? All right. So as our eye is drying, we're going to go ahead and move on. We're, at, we're going to add a little bit of the dark gray on the feet. I'm just going to use my same. Actually, I'm going to go back to my number three round brush. Okay, it can be a little bit bigger. This gray, uh, this gray is a similar color to the one here. Could be a little bit lighter. So I still have some of that here in my, on my plate. So again, it's a similar color to what's on uh, the area in front of the beak. Oh, I know. Sorry. And add the little color above the eye. Again, I leave a little area in between the, the eye and this just carefully. And I'm just kind of dabbing a little bit. Yeah, and then I'm going to come, come underneath it also. I'm just dabbing. I'm just using the tip to dab, 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 dab. Okay. <clears throat> so here we go. A little area underneath. Maybe this comes out a little bit. Who knows? Maybe it comes back a little bit too. See, I'm just barely using the tip of the bristles here to just dab, dab, dab. Okay. <clears throat> What's happening, Robin? How are you? Well, might be a little late, but we're happy you're here. Thank you for joining us. Now, once I've done the eye, I'm going to lighten that color a little bit. Some of this gray, I'm just going to take a little bit of white, just a touch, make a slightly lighter version. You could also use brown for this if you wanted, or a combination of brown and yellow if you've got both of those colors. And I'm just going to use this on the feet. Still using my number three. Maybe you want to switch over to your number one if you have one, a smaller round brush. I come right up to the edge and I 
the edge of my uh, chalk lines. Again, folks, there's a pre-prep video for those of you that didn't uh, didn't know. Those are the kinds of things that that newsletter, it's basically a calendar newsletter, uh, will allow you to stay up to date on. And then whenever I introduce something new or whatever, you guys will be, you know, getting an email from me saying, hey, this is what's happening. We added this event or that event. Okay. But there's the feet. No detail in them. <clears throat> a little darker than what's on the original. If they're too dark and you want to lighten them up, just take a little bit of white and just right over the top. Don't need a lot. What will happen is the two, the gray underneath and the white on top will blend a bit and create a lighter color. Again, if you feel like your feet are a little too dark, just add some white right over top of that wet paint. Ta-da. Lighten those all right up. Okay. All right. A couple minutes. A couple of minutes. If you guys have any questions, please don't be shy. Put them in the comments, especially if you're new. Okay. There are people of varying um, painting experience on here. Most of us have beginner to somewhere in the middle. Some of you guys are somewhere in the novice area. Hi, Shirley. Ah, uh, Shirley. Thank you. Love, love that you come and paint live. That's awesome. I was about to say sorry that you had company, but I don't I don't know, maybe it was fun company. But sorry that you weren't able to miss that you missed and got a little bit behind there. <clears throat> Again, folks, if you guys can help out with the um, algorithm on both Facebook and YouTube, please leave a comment. Say hello if you haven't yet. Say, hey, Jesse, I'm painting from so-and-so, and I'm painting with so-and-so, or I'm going to take this painting and I'm going to give it to my mom or, you know, whatever. Like I mentioned, some of you guys are painting on, um, somebody sent me up. Oh, what? How did I do that? Paula says, oh, I didn't realize I'd put Paula's comment on the, on the screen there. How'd that happen? Let's see. Paula said, second time watching from North Carolina. All right. Sorry about that, Paula. I just now noticed that your comment's up on the screen. Let me see if I can get it out of there. I have to find it. Hold on, Zay. You guys get a little extra time. There it is. You guys get a little extra time. There we go. Didn't even realize how long that, that was up there. I don't know how long I had it up there for. <laughs> Luckily, it was a good comment. Nothing nothing crazy. Although most everyone that paints, everybody's good people that comes on and paints with me. Every once in a blue moon. It's really, really rare. Um, but every once in a blue moon, I'll get somebody comes on here with a negative attitude. <laughs> Extremely rare, though. Guadalupe, thank you, Guadalupe. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I do appreciate that, and thank you for coming and hanging out. As always. All right, so let's do a quick assessment of what we've got so far. So we have a layer Unless I'm missing something, we have a layer of paint over every part of our hummingbird. This is this is what you call the base layer. Okay, now we can start painting over the top, creating some detail, adding effects. Okay, some of these areas are going to take uh, a little bit more than one layer. Some of them are going to have three, but most of them I think we're going to be good with uh, with two. And then of course we got a little detail work over the top. We're going to start from the beginning. We layered the green area first, so that's what we're going to go back to. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start introducing a lighter color over the top of um, the green area. I've got a light green here that I can use. 
If you don't have a light green or a lighter green than what you originally used, if that's what you're using, you can lighten your green up by adding a little bit of white or a little bit of yellow. The yellow is probably the way to go if that's what you've got. What I would do is I would take my green, bring it over to, you know, like your mix plate, introduce a little bit of yellow, see what it looks like. I think you're going to like it. Okay. So I, like I said, I've got some light green. I do have some yellow <clears throat> and we'll see. I might add it later, but I'm going to take my filbert brush now, my little filbert that I've been using. Okay. My little, little number four, if you've got a number five or six or three, all good. Or if you don't have a filbert and you just have a small flat brush, that's what you're going to use. So I'm going to take some of this lime green that I've got on here. It's kind of a lime green. Okay. Straight from the plate. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to start to introduce this to different parts of my hummingbird. Okay. And watch what I'm doing. Now, I'm not putting it in every single area. Okay. Um, I'm just coming through and using mostly the tip and I'm using kind of a scumbling method where I just, I'm creating a little bit of texture. I want some of that original green from underneath peeking through. Okay. Now watch what I do. If I add a little bit of yellow, I am going to go ahead and might as well show you guys what that looks like. Give me a second. Let me, uh, let me come over and grab my yellow. Whoops. <clears throat> let me, uh, I got to move my camera cord back into its position here. Otherwise I might end up tripping on it. We don't want that. It's okay if I trip and I fall in front of the camera, but I don't want to knock my camera over and you know that would be that would be no fun so i'm just taking a little bit of yellow just basic uh yellow here gonna add a little bit to my mix plate again if you don't have yellow don't worry about it just use a light green uh, it, again if you're using green for this now we're come on yellow come on out there we go just taking out a little bit okay putting it on my plate you cover that back up. Speaking of which, I'm almost out. Actually, I have some more on. I have some more over to the side. So, a little bit of yellow. Okay, now I can remove a lot of it by simply bringing it over to the side. There's a little bit of water in my brush, and I'm going to use that. So, I'm mixing the water, a little bit of that green that's on the brush now, and a little bit of that yellow. And I'm just, I can come over. There we go. Gives it a little bit of a lime color. It blends in with that background color and it gives a little bit of a cool, lighter, reflective quality. You know, um, hummingbirds are iridescent, right? You got, they got those really cool kind of metallic colors. If some of you guys have metallic paints, this would be a perfect uh, piece to use that on. Okay, so just coming through again, just working my way around. Some areas are going to have more of the green, some areas are going to have a little bit more of the yellow. If you don't have yellow, just use a little bit of your white. I want there to be a variation in this. Now here's what you guys are going to see. Let me give you a little bit of a close-up. Hold on one second. Because I'm using this brushing method, I'm, I'm just, again, scumbling through like this. Um, it's going to allow some of that paint underneath to peek through in varying degrees. Right? I have some of the green that kind of shows up in between the layer that I just added. That's what I'm looking for. It gives the bird a bit more of a realistic uh, effect. Makes it look more like an actual, you know, real bird. Instead of having all one even color, which makes it look a little bit more cartoony, this is a really cool way to do this. And I can play with the color a little bit. It doesn't have to all be the same light yellow green. I can introduce a little bit more of the dark green back into that mixture that I made earlier of the yellow and the green. The light yellow and the, I'm sorry, the light yellow and the green. Um, and now that just creates a different shade. 
and I'm using different parts of the brush as I move. I kind of turn the brush on its edge, turn it back. I'm turning the brush like this as I'm brushing, right? Just again, creating subtle differences with that brush. Just mixing a little bit more. Yeah, a little more of that uh, light green. And then I'm going to come in here and maybe the back part of the hummingbird has a little bit more of a lighter color, right? A hummingbirds come in all kinds of different patterns and colors. Maybe yours has more of this green or yellowish down towards the bottom. You get to choose. It is your hummingbird. I'm going to come down. If you're doing this with blue, if you're doing this with red or black or gray, it's the same idea. You take the base color. <clears throat> In this case, we used a darker base color. And um, then we we're adding a, a variation of subtle, lighter tones over it. Now, some people like to do it the opposite way. Whoa, give me a second. I'm about to lose my power here. We don't want that. I am about to lose my power on my on my laptop. Woo! Luckily, I caught that. My goodness, that would have been uh, absolutely no fun. Because they would have shut everything off. Got my I forgot to cross it off my checklist earlier. Dang. What was I saying? Whatever color you're using, whether it's a red or blue or gray or what have you. Um, oh, I know what I was saying. Some people sometimes will do it the opposite. They'll do the light colors first and add the dark over that. There's no one way to paint. You play with it, you experiment with it, and you will develop your own preferences. For some paintings, you'll do it one way. For other paintings, you'll do it a slightly different way. There's no one singular way of painting. And that's something that I like to make sure everyone understands. Yes, you'll see some teachers will go, oh, no. You know, some people that are a little bit more, um, you know, maybe we're a little more rigid. They want everyone to paint the same. But as varied as paintings can be, there's no one way. You can create similar effects with different uh, different uh, techniques, okay? different approaches. So there's kind of what I've got right now, giving you a close-up. Again, subtle, lighten it up as you wish. I'm also going to take this color. I'm going to darken it up just a little tiny bit more. Okay, just going to take some of that dark. So somewhere in between color. I still want some of that, some of those lighter hues in there. So. Not a perfect blend. I want some greens and yellows and uh, you know colors in between. I'm going to come it up, come up, and especially here in the wing, when I'm doing my little circles, I want them in this direction, like this, because I'm going to come in here later and add little outlines, little curved outlines, okay? and these will help with that. Notice I'm holding the brush. A lot of little clues. You don't have to do this. You could. You could come up here and do this. Hold it from the very tip of it for more control. And if you're newer at this, maybe that's kind of what you're doing right now. But this is a looser way of painting, a little more relaxed. Again, the idea is that you're able to see subtle changes in color variation throughout your bird. Okay? Come over and do the same thing on the wing on the far side. Now, if the wing on the far side is a little bit darker than the one in the front, that might give you a little bit more of a realistic take because it's the wing that's furthest away from you. Objects furthest away from you tend to be a little bit, well, it depends. It just depends on your perspective. But they could be the same exact shade or it could be a little darker. Maybe there's a shadow between the two feathers, the two wings. But, all right. There we go. Take 
your time, take your time. Okay, let me grab that painting and show you guys a close up. Okay, you can subtle. You can see some of that dark green coming through there, dark green, some of the base colors peeking through here and there. Some areas that are a little bit lighter. Now, once this dries, I can come back and add another layer of lighter parts to the painting if I want. A little lighter shades around the cheeks. Sometimes I notice that uh, certain hummingbirds have these really cool markings around the cheekbones, little cheek area. They tend to be a little lighter than the rest, and that's a really cool effect. I will be adding that here in just a little bit. A little bit of yellow or white, really light green in there. What's up, jo Joan Monroe from Nova Scotia? Whoa, I'm about to fall over here. Well, thank you. Super happy to hear that. My pleasure. Thank you for being here with me today. At least if you're, uh, you know, it sounds like you're painting, but do appreciate you uh, saying hello. Who else do we got, folks? Who else is on here? Who hasn't said hello? Who's being shy right now? Don't be shy. A little comment there, put a little question in there, um, you know. Let me know you're hanging out, whether you're painting or not, maybe you're just watching. Either is perfectly okay. So all right, everyone, you, gotta get, you have about a minute for this step, then we're gonna go ahead and uh, do the same thing. Not as much, but in here, and around the edge a little bit, we're gonna, we're gonna lighten this up until in here, a little bit. Kind of similar technique. Let me see, is this dry? Yeah, so by now, because I started up here and worked my way down, this is dry. So now, using the same little brush, I'm just gonna take a little bit of yellow. I'm gonna start with a little bit. Watch what I do here. Just gonna grab a touch of yellow. Again, this is really flowy paint, so I don't have to add a lot of water to it, if any at all. If you're working with really thick paint, you want to introduce a bit of water. With acrylic paint, water almost always, almost always, will help you paint a little bit more easily. So right in here, a little cheekbone area in here. A little, just gonna add a little yellow highlight. And this blends in with the color below it. So it's not gonna be a super yellow contrast, uh, it's just a slight subtle uh, yellow shoe in there and I can use my finger if it's too intense I can either use my finger to spread it out or if I want I can take a paper towel and I just lightly tap it to remove some of that now if I wanted to I could go in here and add some more little yellow uh, maybe uh, highlights here and there just touching it up to you maybe around here a little bit lighter Create your own markings. You can always come back and add some more of this later. Okay, let's see when you're done with it. When we're done with our session today, you look at, our, at your hummingbird and you think it's perfect or you love it. And then tomorrow you look at it and you go, oh, you know, I could use a little highlight right there, a little highlight there. You can always add this later. Oh, remind me, folks, when we're done, I'll talk to you guys about how to preserve your paintings. For a lot. I've had lots of people asking me, hey, how do you protect your painting? What do you do? What could you add, what is there something you can add to it to protect it? And yes, the answer is yes, you certainly can. There's varnishes that you can apply over the top that will protect them. And then other people ask me, how do you store them? If I wanna uh, hang them year round, I can you know, I do seasonal paintings, how do I store them? There's time at the end, we'll talk about that. All right, perfect, here we go. Next step, I got my light blue, right? The light blue right here. It's not this original dark blue. I'm just gonna put some over here to the side. I'm gonna take a little bit of white. Okay, I'm gonna put it over here next to it. I mix the two together. I wanna make a, a lighter version than this. Okay, so more white. Subtle, just a little subtle change. I'm going to come in here, just right around that edge, the outside edge.
Get it right around right here. Right up to that edge. And maybe I'll bring some of that. Well, first I'm going to come down. Before I start introducing some of this up into the uh, green area, it's the border area, just the edge between the two colors. Now I'll take a little bit of this and I'll bring it into the green. Just Again, I'm just tapping, tapping. If the colors blend a little bit, that's all right. Just a little bit. Okay, there we go. Bring that up a little there. Once I've done that, I'm still using my filbert brush. Sorry, I don't think I mentioned that. I'm still using my filbert. I'm going to take a little bit of that dark blue on my plate. Okay, bring it over. I'm going to mix it. A tiny bit of that, of that original blue, lighter blue. Just mix the two together. Now watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to use the rounded edge of the brush. Okay. Hold on one sec. Okay, rounded edge of the brush. I'm going to come right up here to the belly. And I'm just going to tap it. I can make little tiny, almost like, let me see, I'm trying not to block you guys. Just little, I'm just using the, that little rounded edge and curving. And these little touches to the belly. Now this is going to have, it's going to be covered in glitter. Whoops. Whenever that happens, you got a little, you get a little bit of paint where you don't want it to be, where you don't want it to go. Get a little paper towel, dip it in your water cup, or get some fresh water. You don't need a lot. Just clean it up. Doesn't always remove every single bit of it, but it will remove most of it. Okay, so again, my light, my uh, dark blue, I'm just kind of tapping. The belly here on our hummingbird. All right. All right. <clears throat> now on that original painting, on that little part near the belly, I do have a nice layer of a pretty blue glitter. Okay. For, for those of you that can see that. Okay, there's crystal glitter up in the wings, and green down in here. The calla lily down here also has some uh, some of that crystal or pearl colored glitter in there. Cool little effects. Add a nice, really nice little pop to your hummingbird there at the end. Okay, take a couple of moments on that. Finish that part up. And then we're moving on. Moving on, moving on. So we've been painting, let's see, about an hour and a half. Okay, we got about another, I'd say about an hour, another hour, hour and 40 minutes, maybe hour and 15 minutes. We're all done. We're gonna, once we finish the hummingbird, the rest of it is going to be, we're going to pick up the pace quite a bit because the rest of it is a much more simpler um, process to the painting. Because there's a lot of detail to the hummingbird, we're taking a little time here. I want you guys to get some of that technique down, learn the technique, watch the technique. Uh, so I'm going a little bit more slowly. Also, the type of painting that we're doing requires a little bit more subtlety. So we're taking a little, our time here. But, um, okay, you guys got about a minute there. Now, for those of you that are um, kind of hanging out, waiting for the next step, if you guys are not aware these are some of the events that are coming up on the painting with jesse page here pretty soon 
This one, I don't remember the date. You'll have to go and look at the uh, calendar for that. I did post a calendar on the main painting with Jesse Page. If you go back a few posts, I think it was like late last week, I posted this. Uh, the date for this got this, this family of, tur of turtles. Now, this that one's out in June. We're doing that one in June. At the end of this month, a couple of weeks from now, I think, we're doing this one. It's a cute little pair of turtles in a, in a little lake or lagoon. Or Okay, for those of you who want to know. No, absolutely not, Jessica. You do not need glitter. If you don't have glitter, do not worry about it. Your painting's going to be just fine without it. You can always add the glitter to it later also. If you decide to get some, you can add some glitter at a later time, okay? And just watch the process with me when I get to that point. If you're interested, if not, don't worry about it, okay? Also, folks, um, I do have a virtual tip jar, and I don't, I haven't been mentioning this much, too much, but for those of you that are interested in helping to support the page, I do have a virtual tip jar. I've got a Venmo under Painting with Jesse. I've got a PayPal at paypal.me forward slash painting with Jesse. And then I do have a Zelle at 951-217-2237. Again, a little virtual tip jar for those of you that are interested. It, uh, a little bit helps. I run ads for these events, et cetera, et cetera. And the information's all listed in the description of the video. You can also send uh, stars. I'm not sure if those of you that are familiar with the stars process on Facebook, you can send stars um, and that helps uh, support the page as well. Okay, anyway, let's move on here. So next step, we're gonna add a little bit of detail to the neck, okay? We are gonna do another layer over the feathers down here also. So that uh, we're gonna create, what I'm gonna create right now is a little bit of a darker mixture than that original fuchsia color. Same, same uh, blend of colors. I might add a little bit of blue to it. We'll see, I'm going to take my Filbert brush, my little number four Filbert. I'm going to grab some red, and bring it over. Okay, just like this. Remember, this is going to be a little bit more of a, a darker color. So I'm going to take some pink, put it over to the side, and I'm just going to um, see pink right there. Grab this red. It's a deeper, darker color than what's there. I'm also going to take a touch of my darker blue. If you don't have any, that's all right. I'm gonna mix it in. Too much, well, too much. It's all right. So I went a little too dark there. I'm gonna add more red. There we go, that's more of the color that I want. There's my original color dried here on the side. And there's the new color that I'm going to introduce. Actually, I'm not gonna use my filbert. I'm gonna go back to one of my round brushes, my number three. Okay, so grab, just grabbing a bunch of this paint, and I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to do this. Just going to start creating a little slight curves, almost like little curved um, lines, and mostly. You can curve them in different directions. I'll give you guys a close-up in a moment. A bunch of these little, most of them are curved inwards towards the bird. Almost like letter C's. When you, if you decide you're going to layer over the top of this, like I am with glitter, okay, Some of these are really, really subtle. Now you could, if you wanted to, do a layer of that red like I did with the green and the blue. And I might actually just do it over the top of some of this in between some of these little sections. We'll see in a moment. A lot of painting is, you know, you're going along and you're uh, uh, on the fly, you can change things up. You don't want to be so rigorous and inflexible or you have a set plan on how you're going to approach a painting. Then once you start, all of a sudden you're like, 
that you can't pivot. Okay. So there's my little, just these little tiny subtle lines. Again, most of them are curved towards the inside of the bird, almost like little tiny letter C's. But some of them can take a slightly different curve and maybe go outwards a bit. So I'm going to grab my little filbert here. You watch what I'm going to do right now. It's taking a little bit of pink. Oh, I still I had some pink on my plate. I should just use that. I'm just going to lighten some of this a little bit. Now, it's going to take some of this and in between these little lines that I created, just find little spots and a little touch of color. So again, in between some of those lines that I create, like, they're like little spaces in between those lines. I just come in with my brush and just drop in a little bit of paint. Not all of them, some of them. That variation creates a really nice effect. Just using the rounded head of my filbert. Okay, something like that. Right, Angela? Um, do we have glitter because I didn't purchase it? Oh, okay. So as far as the glitter paint, really quick, Angela, uh, sorry, Jessica asked me about the glitter that I'll be using today. So the brand that I'm using is Glitterific. You can get this on Amazon. You can also uh, pick it up from Hobby Lobby. I've got a bunch of colors of this called Glitterific from Folk Art. Glitterific. Okay, and then um, I have some blue in it. Okay, I've got some. Crystal. Actually, the crystal one that I've got is from Deco Art. It's called Galaxy Glitter. Deco Art. Galaxy Glitter. This is the pearl one. And I've got some a little bit of red in the glitterific. Now, surprisingly, even though I've got a bunch of this, this is not my favorite glitter. It's really nice to work with. But there's this other one called uh, Craft Twinkles from. I think it's also Deco Art. Craft yeah, Craft Twinkles from Deco Art. That one's a really nice one. <clears throat> you can use that to, uh, it's finer glitter bits, whereas the Glitterific is, has thicker bits of glitter in it. Okay, I don't know why I took off the uh, the cap on my water bottle. And then I, and then I lost, maybe, that, maybe I thought I was taking it off a bottle of paint. Who knows? Okay, <clears throat> now, <clears throat> excuse me, same brush. Same color that I just used. It could be a little different. It doesn't have to be exactly identical to the original color that's on here. So we're going to do another pass of, um, of this paint over the feathers. Again, leaving that separation in between where my lines are, my drawing lines are with that, uh, with my chalk so that I can. See those and outline those later. There we go. A little bit up there, maybe that, maybe the area around the face. I'm going to add, take just pink. I'm going to remove, I got quite a little too much pink in there. But I'm just going to come in and drop a little bit right over the top. Brightening that up a little bit. Oh, I like that. <clears throat> okay. Do not be afraid to experiment a little, folks. If you think something might look nice, 
you, lo you really don't lose anything by trying. One thing that I'll say is if you're a little too hesitant, that can paralyze you. Um, sure, you can make something less appealing to you by taking a chance at something and you're like, oh, I don't like that. Man, I ruined my painting. But those little experimentations will lead to bigger learning experiences. Okay, Mistakes, if you can call them that. Bob Ross says, happy little accidents, right? If you, if you uh, take those mistakes, if you take chances and are willing to make mistakes, you will learn. You will pick up things, sometimes a little bit faster, okay? Because those chances that you take are, are learning experiences. Sometimes they work out perfectly and you're like, oh my gosh, look at that. And then other times, not so much, but you learn. Either way, you learn. Okay, don't be afraid to uh, take little risks. That's what painting's about. Art in general, that's what it's about. Okay, now, next step. Um, let's see here. We're going to do the beak. We're going to add some detail to the eye. And then we're going to start working on our background, the purple background. We're going to work on that here in just a moment. Okay, uh, but we're going to add another layer of gray to that beak. Just because we move on to the background and everything else doesn't mean we're done with the... Uh, with the hummingbird, it means that we are allowing those layers that we just added, those little details, to dry. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, come back, add things like the outlines, add some few little subtle things. We'll look at our hummingbird, see where it is, make an assessment, and then go from there. Okay, but what I'm going to do here, actually going back to my, to my number three round brush. My number three, little round brush. Remember, gray and... We're going to make a gray by mixing white and black. So a little tiny bit of black is all we need. Again, over to the side. Some white. Bring that over. Bring that white. Put it down. I've already got a little bit of black in my brush. Let's mix those two together. Maybe that's a little too dark. Doesn't have to be perfectly blended. In other words, I could have subtle differences within the mixture that I'm making. Blend that in, blend that in, and here we go. I can work my way from the base outward, or I can work myself my, my way from the beak, from the point of the beak inwards. Spin the brush to make it skinnier. And then here we go. As I work my way back, I start to press, press, press. Add a bit of water to your mixture if you need to. Hold your breath if you need to, like I was just doing. Now, I don't know how perfectly pointy or straight hummingbird beaks are. If I'm not mistaken, there are some, some hummingbirds with slightly bent beaks, curved. Is that, is that right, or am I just imagining that? I've seen that. Or do all hummingbirds tend to have really straight beaks? So if you know, let me know. Uh, what, what part is that, Jessica, the cheekbone? Yeah, I did a, I'm not sure if you mean a little yellow in here. I did. Got a little bit of yellow in there. We'll probably add a little bit more later. <clears throat> Come back and add a little bit more, but I do have some, some yellow in there. We added that um, a little earlier, but we can always add some more. In a while, once we've got the hummingbird mostly done, we'll assess it and kind of go from there. We'll talk about, you know, making little adjustments, et cetera, if you'd like. So all I'm doing right now is I'm using the little point of the of the brush. If your if your beak isn't really straight, I can, you can come around the edges and carefully, carefully refine it. Now this beak is a little bit wider than that one. I can fix that by making this a little bit longer. It looks like this one might be just a touch longer. I can make this one a little bit longer to make that adjustment, or I can leave it. 
Still looks like hummingbird. Still looks like hummingbird's beak. All good. Okay. Now, while we're here, a little touch of white. Now I'm switching over to my zero brush because I want the tip to be a little bit smaller. Little tiny liner brush. Dip it right into my white paint. For those of you with thicker paint, add a little bit of water to your mixture. I'm just going to take this little tiny dot right about there. The little eye comes alive when you do that. Okay, now you've got a little hummingbird that's a little bit livelier than it was a moment ago. Now I also have a little tiny reflection right down in here I'm about to add. Okay, so like in here, little tiny one. And if it gets too big, let's see, when you add these, they're too big. Simply take a paper towel, dab it a little bit, and then come over with black and make it smaller. I can also use this white now to come around in here. A little tiny bit, maybe, around the bottom part of the eye. That might be too much. We can always fix this. Just using the very, very tip of my brush. Very tip of the brush here. Went around the outside of the eye and the, on the back part. Sometimes, another thing that I like to say that I want to explain, sometimes people are afraid that they're not advanced enough, for example, to be in one of the sessions that we're doing. We do sessions with all kinds of different, uh, of all, you know, different levels. None of them have been extremely difficult, but there have been some, and, I, and it's all relative, right? But there are, there are some that are more difficult than others. Just because you're a newer painting, a newer painter or a more novice painter, doesn't mean you cannot jump in on a more advanced painting than what you're used to. That is one way to speed up your learning curve. Even if you don't do well at your painting, you are going to learn in the process. If you stay in a really shallow pool, for example, right? Um, you're not going to push yourself to the extent that you're learning at a, at a more quickly pace, at a, more, at a faster pace, at a quicker pace. Um, so I always recommend, even if it seems like something's going to be more difficult or it's not at your level, go for it. Worst case scenario, you're not happy with your results, but you will learn. Okay, and I'm saying that just in case some of you are looking at this going, dang, this is a little bit uh, more than what I expected. Don't be discouraged. It's all, um, it's all gonna work out regardless, okay? All right, so one more minute. We're gonna start working on the background. We're gonna start working in the leaves, um, the calla lily and stuff like that, and then we're gonna come back and add the final details to the hummingbird, things like the outlines, outlines on the feet, out the little center part for the beak, uh, outline over the head, and the definition between the uh, inside parts of the wings, those little segments, okay, just little touch-ups like that. Um, and then maybe some highlights, or um, we're gonna add these little lines in, that, the, in the wing, the little feathers, little segments in, that, in those wings, okay? So that's what's coming next. All right, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. What else can I show you guys while I'm here, <laughs> while we're waiting? Oh, this is what I was gonna show you guys. For those of you that are bird lovers, for those of you that are bird lovers, I'm sure some of you guys that are here are here because you're, you really like painting birds. This tutorial right here is available under the live tab. That was a little bit more of a winter theme. But you can change it up a little bit to make it look less wintry. I teach you how to draw these cardinals from scratch. Okay, um, so for those of you that, those of you that are interested, that is available. There's also a really cool Blue Jays one. There's a really nice Blue Jays one uh, available. You guys can go check out. All right. Okay. Any questions, folks? Any questions before we move on? We're about to uh, start working on that background, like I just mentioned. Okay. 
We're ready to go. We're ready to go. So I've got some purple, some lavender, rather, here on my plate. Some of you are going to have a blue background. Some of you are going to have a yellow background. I know you. some of you are, are already looking to change things up or have already decided you're going to have a different color for your background. All good. Um, whatever you want to do with yours. Again, as I've already mentioned, please feel free to uh, do so. But here we go. I'm going to take my brushes that are in my rinse cup, clean them up a little. I'm going to move these over. Oh, let me change the view on this thing. I'm going to take these and put them in my little bin, my little tin, so that they're sitting on at an angle. I'm going to take my brush here, my number one. Now, this paint right here is a little bit thicker than the flowier paint that I showed you earlier. Okay, I'm going to take my brush, and I should have done this before I stuck it in the paint, but that's all right. I'm going to dip my brush in my water cup. I'm going to introduce some water droplets here. We'll do this a couple of times. Okay, I mix that water with my paint. Now, I, don't, I don't know that I'm going to be using all that paint. This is all one color, and I've got a bunch of it in a jar. This isn't anything that was pre-mixed, so it's, not, it's nothing that I'm going to have to mix again. The only thing I'm introducing is a little bit of water to help the paint flow. Once I've got my paint slightly watered down, you could use a smaller brush for this step, just to be a little bit more careful. But I'm going to take this. And I'm going to care for, and I might have to switch over to a smaller brush in a bit. We'll see. I'm going to outline everything around my hummingbird. You know what? Yeah, let me switch. I'm just going to put that to the side. I'm going to use, ah, why not? I'm going to go to my filbert. It's a good one to outline with. Okay. Just makes it easier to, uh, to outline these. Areas less likely that I'm going to accidentally paint over uh, the inside of my hummingbird all the way around. Outline, outline. I'm using the skinny edge of the brush. Or rather one of the sides. Carefully outlining everything. Okay. All right, got everything around my hummingbird outlined, I believe. Let's see, didn't miss anything. Now I'm going to outline my leaves up at the top. Notice I'm working rather quickly here. There's nothing. With the leaves, I don't have to be as careful. Okay. 
Amir. Um, Kella Lily. Okay, once you've got everything outlined, now, depending on the size of your canvas, you want to switch over to a larger, a larger brush. Now I can come in here with my one, in, my one inch flat. I'll do this. Now, for this background, I'm going to use these short, quick brush strokes where I paint in different directions. I come right up to the edge of the hummingbird and pull the paint that I used to create the outline out. I'm doing this. Okay, and right over the top of that. What this does is it creates, because I'm going to be using this technique throughout the entire canvas. If you're using different brush strokes, if you leave that outline as is around your hummingbird and paint around it, so let's say over here. I do this instead. I don't come right, I don't grab the actual outline. I come to the edge of the outline, I pull it, I paint around it. It's going to be obvious that I outlined. I'm gonna be able to see the outline of my hummingbird and I don't want that. So I take the edge of the brush, come right up over the top of the, of the, uh, of the outline, right up over the top and pull away, okay? I just kind of use the angle of that line to come away from it perpendicularly. Now, once I've done that, I can just come in and as you get more experience with this, it becomes kind of second nature. You don't have to really think about it too much. It's something that you just do. If you, like I said, if you don't do that and you leave the outline and just paint around the outline, not over it, it's going to be obvious that you outlined your hummingbird, you're going to be able to see that outline. Now here on the calla lily uh, at the bottom, I actually have a deeper purple around it. What I did on the original painting is I had, I, I originally had a deeper purple background. That color that you see around it is the color that I used. I lightened it up by um, putting a lighter, this lavender color over it. But I came, I, I actually like that look around the, the lily, so I left it. I left that deeper purple underneath showing. You could come back and create the, the same effect by outlining it with a darker purple. Oftentimes when I paint, as I'm making my background, after I've made my background, I, I often decide to, ch decide to change it, whether I want it darker, a different color, etc. But... Um, when I, when I do the edge on something, when I outline something, I often will leave a little bit of that original color peeking through because it creates a really cool effect. So again, using this crosshatch pattern, I'm just going in different directions. I'm not using the long brush strokes that sometimes you'll see me use when I first paint Let's say when I, uh, I often will paint the background first. So instead of having drawn the, the hummingbird, <clears throat> I could have painted the entire background in this color and then came in and added everything else over it, the drawing part of it, the painting part of it, right? Um, I can use long brush strokes, whether either vertical all the way through, sorry, horizontal all the way through, up and down, or vertical ones all the way through. And that creates a really nice, smooth, clean background. But when you're painting around something, it's a lot harder to do because you have to stop, right? You have to stop. Those are a lot harder to, to do and it's a lot harder to keep your lines nice and smooth and even. So this creates a nice alternative. As long as I'm using the same crosshatch pattern throughout, the, the uh, finish is nice and even throughout. I don't want to use this crosshatch pattern here and then a straight across one there and then a vertical one over here because it will be obvious when your painting is, is dry. You'll be able to see that. I 
Out here where it's nice and uh, open space, I can just quickly, in other words, I'm not contending with the hummingbird's edge or, or the uh, leaves or anything like that. I just very quickly can cover a lot of ground. Depending on the type of paint that you're using, even if it's acrylic, there are different consistencies in the paint. I'm sure you've already gotten that by now. And they can be a little more transparent than others. If you made, if your paint is thick, you may not need a second layer of paint on your background. We'll see what mine looks like after this. When this dries, I'll take a look. I'll assess it and decide whether I need another layer or not. Don't forget, you outline your uh, leaves. Pull, pull that paint right over the top of the outline. Pull it away. And then right over the top of that, continue with your crosshatch pattern. So I try to teach you guys technique while we paint, right? It's not just about you guys following along as I paint. I want you guys to also learn for those of you that are looking for more than just a painting follow along, a follow along with the painting process. I try to introduce something new in each painting and I also try to reinforce things that I've talked about in the past. But just do. Was it Yoda that said that? Just do. Um, you're going to learn. I, I, I've said this before. Trial and error. Just go for it. It's how I taught, I taught myself to paint, essentially, by just going for it. I learned as I went. Learned as I went. I made a mistake. Ooh, okay. That didn't work. Those two colors. Whoa, those two colors made a mud color. What the heck? Before I learned any theory on paint or anything like that, I just went for it. As I went, I, le I learned. You don't need to jump into books or, or, you know, go to school and learn, you know, from reading. You could, but you don't need to. You can just jump right into it. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? You produce some paintings you don't like. Trust me, even if you go and study the stuff, you're going to produce paintings you don't like. I might have covered my beak a little bit with this purple. I was, as I was talking, I wasn't paying attention. That's all right. We'll fix that. And what's that that I always say? Take it easy on yourself. Give yourself time to learn it. Don't be so hard on yourself. All right. I know a lot of people shied away from the Summingbird painting because it looks technically difficult compared to a lot of the stuff that we do on here. They looked at it and were like, oh my gosh, I don't know. I don't know if I can do it. So I'm happy that many of you I know were kind of, that were tentative to try it. For those of you that were tentative, I'm glad you're here trying it. Because again, it is how you learn. Thank you, Shirley. Hi, Carol says, on my work break, saying hi, and I will watch this later. Fantastic. Hi, Michelle. Michelle Waller, Dillahunty. I'm watching quietly. Awesome. Awesome, Michelle. Carrie Richard says, my wings came out purple, so I'm going with it. Hey, purple wings work. Now, this color here, once it dries, it's probably going to be a little bit of a darker version than this. 
Um, I could lighten it if I want, but I don't think so. I think I'm going to keep it as is. I thought I had the same original color in that, um, but I, now that I recall, I added just a touch of white, but that's okay. That's okay. The original color was a lot darker. So work on your background. Once you've done, you're done painting the front, you want to decide if you're working on a canvas where you're, whether you're going to do your edges. On the original, I did my edges, most of them. Looks like I missed a little bit here. But I did my edges, okay, all the way around, top, bottom. You decide. Some people don't like to do their sides. It's up to you. Just going to come down here and really quickly put all that in. Now I'm going to start picking things up a little bit simply because I don't want to don't want us to run too late. I know some of you there's a little bit of paint fatigue that settles in sometimes, uh, but also because uh, the video is being recorded. If you missed any of this, the main the most important thing is the hummingbird. But even that, if you missed anything, you can always come back and rewatch the video, and you'll get a uh, a good sense of uh, what you've got to do next, right? Or, or sorry, not a good sense, but you'll be able to continue wherever or with whatever you may have missed. Right, left and right. Now the very bottom edge of my canvas, the bottom edge down here, I don't do that till, uh, till the very last step. After I sign the piece, after I'm all done with the painting on the front part of the canvas, I'll come, I'll flip it over on its head, paint that part of it, let it dry for a bit. Because I'm painting on an easel, if I paint it now, it could glue the painting. And there has been a couple of times where uh, I've seen somebody who I was, I was working with on a painting, they painted the bottom part without me, without me knowing, and then they went to remove it, and they, uh, they were stuck. We had, it can glue the canvas to the easel. Okay, so there we go. Once you've covered up the entire front, your background, take a little look and just add little touch ups wherever you feel like you need something. I'm going to give you guys about two minutes and we're going to start adding in the color for the, whoops, for those leaves. I gotta straighten out my floor covering down here, fix it. So I don't trip. So for those of you that might be interested in um, getting, in, getting more in depth, taking your painting skills to uh, another level and learning more technique and things of that nature, I am working probably sometime in July is what I'm thinking on, uh, on a membership um, membership page. Whether it's gonna be through Facebook, more than likely, it will still be here on Facebook. Um, I am working on a membership, painting membership, where we delve more into technique and um, we'll have things like Q and A's, paint over Zoom sessions, where I can see what you're painting, you can show me your paintings, and. It's in the early stages of the planning, even though I've been thinking about this for a while and it's been floating around in my head for a minute. Um, that is coming. We'll always have the lives and stuff. And I'm sure I'm, I'm sure I'll be having things like exclusive lives for the group. Um, but uh, again, for just throwing that out there for some of you that might be interested, that's coming later. Still working out the idea and. Um, what's going to be offered and, every, and all that good stuff. I'm gonna be offering a whole lot through that. For all of you that want to, again, you want to improve 
much more quickly, really, really get into the nitty gritty of painting. You'll be able to learn at your own pace, no pressures, nothing like that. We're open to all stages of painters. But again, something for those of you that are that are, might be interested in something like that to look forward to, perhaps. More details to come as I as I um, develop the the idea. Okay. Yeah. Heck yeah. <clears throat> Oh, okay, Michelle. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, more dimension. Basically, if you'd like, when you get a chance after you're done, if you want to send me a picture of what your fence looks like, send me a picture through messenger and I'll see if I can give you some, some ideas. Okay. Mainly though, part of what gave my fur dimension is all those little subtle shifts in tone, uh, in colors. The, the lightly different uh, shades, the different shades that are in there. Whoops, and I just grabbed <laughs> my canvas, got wet paint all over my hand. But it's a little shifts in tone uh, that will create depth and dimension. Also, you can play with the thicknesses of your paint. When you apply paint, some areas are going to be a little thicker than others. All of that will give you some dimension. If you're using one even color, that will tend to give you a more of a flat finish, okay? More of a 2D effect. But anyhow, just so that you're, uh, if you'd like, again, you can send me, you can send me a picture and we'll, we'll figure it out. Okay, some dark green. If you don't have dark green, you can use a light green. I'm just gonna take a little bit of this and pour it on my plate here, don't need a lot. I'm gonna work on my leaves. Switching over, this stuff is pretty basic, nothing crazy about this. Just going to put a thick layer using my uh, number eight flat brush. Okay, a little number eight flat brush. Just going to scoop up some green. And I'm just going to go right over the top using the skinny edge of my brush. It might mix in with a little bit of that purple paint underneath. All good. go but anyway i'm excited the things like zoom sessions i can i know not everybody likes zoom right i'm not i'm not saying that that's it'd be optional just like with everything else but being able to see what you guys are painting and having you guys show me hey what can i do for this or how do i fix that or you know that's a different dimension no pun intended um to this whole process. Q and A's, we can sit down and ask questions. You can, you know, show me your brushes, all of that stuff. We can learn, we can focus on technique. Right in here for my little, for my um, branches on the, on the leaves, I'm just using a same little flat brush. I just press it against the plate, make that edge nice and skinny. And I just add that in. Okay. This is really thick paint that I applied to my to my leaves. Oh, was that not in view? Yes, it was. Okay. For some reason, I thought the the camera lens had maybe I accidentally had moved it or, or zoomed in a little too much. Okay. I'm gonna take some of this green, come across like this. Same again, flat brush, just use that edge. And then I got my calla lily down here that I want to add some of this to the base. Now I'm going to take a little bit of yellow or white, or you can take the lighter shade of your green down there. Take any one of those. And I'm going to add some down in here. Something like that, okay? Take a little step back. Let's look at our painting from a distance. 
Got a few more little things to add. I'm just going to get right into that. That calla lily, again, I'm speeding things up a little. Don't stress out on me because you're falling behind or whatever. Try to stay up with me, especially when I get back to the hummingbird. You're going to be able to come back and add all of this um, with the recorded session. And it will be available right after I'm done um, with the session. I'm going to take my um, a little eight flat brush. I could, I could also use the um, half inch flat brush for this. I'm going to use my mix plate. I'm going to scoop up a bunch of this white. Okay, a little blue in there that fell in there. No big deal. Now, right over here somewhere, this paint in the background is already dry. I'm going to grab a little bit of the purple. Okay, little touch of tiny, tiny bit of this black. Oh, I maybe have to make some more. Let's see. We'll see right now. Yep. I'm going to grab a little bit of my black paint, a touch, like a smidge. When I say smidge, I mean smidge. I barely have anything on that corner. When I mix it in, it makes a big impact right away. More of the lavender. Okay. Take a little touch of more black. Again, you see I'm introducing that dark color really slowly. Because if I go too quickly, it's going to make, make it dark really, really fast. I'm going to come in here and start right in here. I don't need a lot of definition right here in this, in this area of my flower. This flower is a, is a more impressionistic flower as far as the... Uh, technique that I'm using. Now I'm going to take some of this white. I still have some of that purple on my brush, but I'm going to put some here on the side. I'm grab a little bit of that mixture that I just made, a little bit, bring it over. And now I come in like this, brushing in different directions, thick paint. Come in and put some in here as well. Using the edge, I want to flatten it out. I just press my brush against the plate. Okay, all the way around. Come down, over. Okay, now I'm going to take some white, just white, thick white. Layer that right over that color that I just had. The two colors will blend a bit. Now, if you want your calla lily really white, you can do something like this. Let it dry a little bit and then come back. Once it's dried, come on back. Oops, picked up a little pink there by accident. It's all right. And you put a layer of that white right over the top of this, and it will become really white. Okay, let me take some more of this white. Come down here. Okay. A little more black. A smidge more black this time with my purple. Okay, so purple and black. Got a little bit of that white in my brush. Was I off? Got to make sure I stay in camera when I do this. Then in here, I grab a little bit more purple and a touch more black. Color's a little swirly. Again, it's not a perfect blend. I'm not looking for a perfect blend. I want there to be some variation in there.
Okay. Just taking a little bit of white and smearing the paint right over the top. The top upper part of the flower. Okay. You grab a little bit of yellow. Same brush. Now you can let this dry again. We'll let that dry for a bit. Maybe we'll come back and add a little bit more paint over the top so we can um, just to make it a little bit more defined color wise. Take some, some yellow and just dab it right there. A little dab of paint. What's up, Sue? How are you? Thank you, Rosa. Let's see, Barbara Dibburn says, hi, Jesse, looks great. Had a dentist appointment today in your old stomping ground, San Bernardino Road and Azusa. Yeah, oh, crazy. That's um, Covina. We'll tackle this later. Birds have been my nemesis. You got this, Barbara. You got this. I believe in you. Just a little practice, a little practice. Ah, I'm also going to grab a little bit of this, of this yellow, and I'm going to come down here and just a little bit over the top near where the flower starts. Ooh, it looks like maybe that's out of view, isn't it? Let me see if I can uh, back it up a little tiny bit right there. So right in here, just added a touch of this yellow. Okay. One more thing. I'm going to add some white to those flowers up on top. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. Let's see. Uh... Is it the filbert that I'm going to use? I could, I could use the filbert. Filbert it is. Okay, I think I need a little bit more white. Let me get some out on my plate. Okay. Whoops, back over here. Just scooping up some white using my filbert. Anything there. Bringing this paint a little thick, giving it, giving the flowers a bit of dimension. Okay. And that is that. Okay, two things. I'm gonna back, go back over my beak just to refine it. Then I'll come back and outline it in a bit. But my gray, light gray color that I use down here in the calla lilies, just gonna lighten it up a little bit. Come across, fix the beak. Like I said, I accidentally painted over it with the purple. Can't have a hummingbird without a, without a beak. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to take some, some darker green. I could use this dark green or I could use, yeah, I'll use this. Again, if you don't have dark green, add a little bit of blue or even a touch of black to your mixture, to your paint. Still using my number three brush. Take a little bit of water. An outline my hummingbird, parts of my hummingbird anywhere, like the back part over here. I'm going to come start right in here on the wing. Right over my chalk line, if I could still see it. Okay, right up in here. Then right over the head. Let's 
see what that starts to do. It starts to make the hummingbird stand out against that background. So right here. Now I didn't outline. Oh yeah, I did a real tiny, really thin outline on that outside wing. Little, little subtle thing under the mouth. Okay. Now I'm going to take, take a little bit of red here. A little bit, a little bit of this dark blue. I'm going to make a really dark, kind of just a, more of a burgundy color. You don't have blue, dark blue, you use a touch of black. It will give you a similar color, actually. I'm just going to take this, I'm going to outline. There we go. Down here, between the feathers on the tail. In red and that uh, red and blue, a little bit of water. In between the feathers. All this is dry down here, so I can actually press my hand right up against the canvas and help support my lines here, my brush strokes. Okay. I've got a little bit of blue where my outline is for the for the um, chalk. I can come back with some green and just paint right over the top of that. All right, a little step back. Let's look at what we got. Same with this, some of this uh, green in here. I'm just going to grab a little bit of it. Bring it over here. Drop some of that dark green. Notice my palette, my main paint palette became my mix plate. I'm actually going to switch brushes. Let's go to the little skinny thing, my zero. There you go, Jill. What color did you use on your background? Because, yeah, once you do the outline on the bird, on your hummingbird, it will make it stand out. If the color, if your background color is a little, um, if there's not enough contrast between the bird and the background, uh, it may, you know, make the bird kind of disappear a bit. But once you outline it, it will make a difference. All right, a little bit of this dark green. Got a little bit of uh, this stuff right in here. A light green. I'm just going to come in here. And I'm going to make these little, almost like sideways or, or flipped C, letter C's or U's, N's, whatever you want to call them. I'll give you a close-up in just a moment. Actually, I'll give you a close-up now. Just a few of these. Okay. Let's see if I can do this. Holding the can. Sorry if it's all over the place. You want to simplify the way your brain sees what's happening. So these are a bunch of little hills or M's. Think of something that they resemble that you're familiar with. 
and then use that as a reference. Okay. There we go. We like that. Okay. And if they're too intense, you could always take paper towel, little bit of water. Look at that. I ended up using my paper towels all that much today. Ended up um, being a little cleaner of a session than it normally is. Just have a little bit of water on this. Super, super, um, like really just lightly damp. I'm just going in here and tapping these and making them a little bit more subtle. Careful though, when you do this, experiment with it. I mean, try a little area first. You don't want to remove any of the background paint. Okay. My beak should be dry by now. I'm going to use my little zero brush. I'm going to grab a color similar. It could also be black, but I'm going to grab a color similar to this. See if I still have some left. If not, I'll have to make some. So remember that color is black and white, a really dark gray color. So there's my white, already mixed in with some of that black. And then I'm going to grab some water, dip my brush. Because I'm making a really fine line, I want to add water to it. It's less of a struggle. Okay, here we go. Hold my breath. Try not to chuckle as I do this. I almost made myself chuckle a bit. So just the very tip of these little point here is what I'm using. Okay, don't forget you spin it in the against the plate, it makes that point even smaller. And then maybe I'll outline a little bit over the top here and there to give it more definition. And maybe the outline on the outside is a little bit of a lighter gray instead of being as dark as it is on the on the inside. Usually with, with these line, thin lines, once you once you decide to go, you just want to move. Carefully but with confidence. If you hesitate too much, your hand will shake a little bit. <clears throat> awesome, Rose. Oh, okay, Jill. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I read your comment. I think when I asked you, when I said, what color did you use in the background, right? Your response is the same color as you. For a moment, I'm like, I started looking at my arms <laughs> to look at what color you used. Oh my gosh, you meant the same color <laughs> background. All right. <laughs> so yeah, once you outline it, it will it will stand out some more. Okay. I was really thrown off for a moment. I, I was going, wait. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, too funny. All right. We got everything in here done except for the outline on the feet and the, the outline for the separation on the wings and maybe some of this little gray that's in there. I'm going to do the feet really quickly. Same little zero, a similar color to what I used on the beaks. As long as it contrasts where I can see the outlines that I create on those feet, that's all that really matters. <clears throat> okay, a little bit of black. 
little bit of black and that um, white to create a dark gray. I'm gonna give you a little close up. You got a little line on the outside, a little line in between. You can see part of the of the other foot, not the entire foot. Well, let me give you a close, a better close up. How's that? Hopefully, you guys can see that. <laughs> I know Sue. I know Penny. Too funny. I seriously was. Wait a minute. I'm going. Um. All right. How'd she mix that? <laughs> Sorry, I'm over here making myself laugh a little too much, I think. Okay, now, outside the other one. Go back this way. Other side. Okay. <clears throat> and then a little line, a little thin line down the middle. There we go. Okay. I can just a little bit. Maybe um, maybe you could add a little extra leg right there. It's really up to you. Okay. But something like that. Uh, the flowers in this upper corner, they're just white. Just white. You could still see a little bit of the outline for my um, uh, chalk. I can always come back and do another layer of white over the top, and that's perfectly good. Awesome, Don. No worries. Absolutely. I understand. Go relax and come back to it tomorrow. Okay. So very last thing we're going to do is a little uh, outline in between the feathers. For that, it's a really light gray with a little tiny bit of a mixture <clears throat> in white. You don't need much. Make sure you add a little bit of water. I'm using my Number zero, water is your friend. Remember, water is your friend. Just going to come in here. Now, you can outline the outside of the wings if you'd like. Or simply keep this in between the feathers. All right. Awesome, Penny. Yeah, we, we hung ours up today. We have one. We, ha we hung it up. And uh, yeah, we'll see. You get plenty of hummingbirds over here, so. It's cool, it's that time of year, I guess. Okay, now, you could bring your lines all the way in to touch the purple part down in here, right where they actually kind of connect. Especially if you're, if you're planning on adding um, glitter. This that part doesn't make too much of a difference. You could make those all the way down so that they're connecting to the purple part there. And then maybe part of it down in here, you bring some of that, this purple in a bit so that it kind of out, um, does this sort of thing. This is a little bit random. There's no rhyme or reason. Just trying to, maybe not no rhyme or reason, but you could do this where you're adding a little bit of a shading effect near the base of the feathers. And it's, there is a bit of a randomness though, randomness, 
randomness, getting a little tired. Bit of a, of a random process here where you allow the brush to create a little bit of a shade between the purple part and then the, the white part. A little bit. Kind of like that. Don't worry about trying to make it perfect again. Right, everyone's is going to look a little different. Please don't forget to send me pictures of your paintings so I can share those. I come right in here, shoot the, these little segments up on top. Little segments for that wing. If you're struggling at all to get that paint to spread on your canvas, make sure you add a little bit of water to your paint. Okay, all right. Let me take a little step back. Yeah, we could have three toes on this one. That's right, Sue. Two in the back. Um, I could add a little tiny peak of a third toe on this one. Because I uh, on this one here, it just looks a little more, there's a little more dimension on that toe than there on that foot than there is on this one. We might fix that here. We'll see. But absolutely, because of the perspective that we're in, you only see part of that foot over there, so you would see less toes on this one. Could also be that, you know, depending on how he's holding his, uh, our little bird is holding um, the foot, that maybe you only see the ones on this side. But either way will work. <laughs> What's happening, Lisa Houston? How are you? Wow, you guys are troopers, those of you that are still hanging out. Okay, so let's look at our bird. What else can we do? Before we start on that glitter, is there anything that I'm missing? You could go in there and further refine things. For example, I can, I'm just randomly picking this, my number eight flat brush, taking a little tiny, tiny touch of yellow. And I'm just going to come in here and maybe add a little bit more of a highlight. So, so that cheek stands out a little bit more. And I'm barely touching. This is a bit of a, what you call a dry brush method. I, I, there's very little paint on my brush here. And I'm just... Okay, and anywhere else that I might want to have these little highlights, before I start to add glitter, I can come in here and do the same thing. Maybe down here. Oh, I'm going to take a little bit of green and a little bit of this yellow to cover this area up down here. Where I see my chalk lines on the inside of our bird. There we go. Yeah, this bird isn't quite as sharp as, uh, sorry, the beak on this one isn't quite as sharp as that one. That's okay. If I really wanted to fix that, I could take a little time to, it's part of the outline also, part of the purple area around it um, isn't quite as defined. I would come in here and clean up, use, I could use purple to come in and just kind of slightly touch it up really light um, to make sure that, that that does get a little bit more defined. It's just mainly it's the edge. Whoops, got a little bit of yellow on my brush. Let me not do that right now. But anyway, that's how I would do that. I would go in there and I would take my purple and just make sure that I clean up the, not the actual beak itself, but the area right around the beak. There's a little light area around the beak that's making the, the beak look a little bit larger. So I would clean that up. <clears throat> I'm not worried about that right now, but yeah, definitely good observation. There are gonna be some differences between the two. Um, you can define and refine and refine as much as you you know you want. Everyone, um, sometimes you look at a piece and you you go, okay, you know, I'm gonna 
I'm happy with where it, where it look, how it looks. And then you come back later and you look at it again and you go, oh, let me add this or let me add that. But, but yes, absolutely. Also, even my flower down here, I could just take a little bit more white, for example, add a little bit more to the base to make it stand out a little bit more. Give it a bit of a, more of a light uh, color. I could also come in here, clean that up a little bit. So there are some things that we can go in there and refine. Okay, I'm not too worried about that right now because we're getting a little bit late in the session. But if you wanted to, same exact techniques that we have used earlier, you would just come back, add extra layers of paint, for example, right in here. The more of this white paint that I add, the lighter this area will become. I know some people like to have really light white calla, calla lilies. There are other color uh, calla lilies, if I'm not mistaken. But I saw some pinks and some, maybe some yellow ones. But um, anyhow, we could take a little bit of that uh, purple and grayish mixture, come in here, clean that up a bit. We're going to talk about glitter here in just a moment. Glitter talks coming up. For those of you that have glitter, again, if you don't have any glitter and you'd like to add some later, you absolutely can. Uh, the stuff that I pick up, you can get it on Amazon. You can get it um, on uh, at Hobby Lobby or Michaels. Ah, okay. Yep, it sure will, Michelle. Yes, please send me a picture, Jill. I want to check that out. Okay, so let's talk about our bird and the glitter. Another thing, real quickly, before I continue, I can do this. I can scoop up this purple and the white. I want my wings to have a little bit more dimension. A little purple, a little white, slightly swirly, more white than purple. I can come in here and just add a little bit of this to parts of the feathers. Okay, I'm just going to talk about this before we jump into that glitter. Is looking a little bit flat, so this is one way. Oh, too much purple in there, but that's all right. To remove some of that flatness in a painting, you introduce variations of the colors that you're working with to give it a little bit of that variation in light, variation in, uh, yeah, the. the light reflection. Okay. There we go. All right, let's talk about glitter. So I mentioned that I've got a few different glitter colors. Glitterific. All this is really is glitter floating around in a base of glue or glue like. Okay. I've got some, some reddish orange color. I got this really cool purple. Sorry, blue purple with some. Uh, purple bits in there. Don't need a lot of that. I've got some pearl and I've got some green. Just pouring these out on my plate here before I trick with glitter. For those of you that aren't familiar with it, with this glitter stuff, you want to uh, you want to make sure that you apply it with a relatively clean brush, and you also want to make sure that the surface that you paint, as you're painting on your surface, that 
it's uh, the surface is also dry. So for example, right now that I just painted those wings, I would wait before I add any glitter to that. I got the colors that I'm going to use right in here. Really cool glitter colors. I'm going to primarily be using, let's see, let's start with the uh, half inch, my half inch brush, half inch flat. <clears throat> Just grabbing, let's start with the green. This glitterific glitter is pretty thick. Okay, now I'm going to use this just like I do paint, but maybe not the entire um, hummingbird is going to get some of this. I'm going to use it to accent areas, like for example, the top of the head, maybe the wing. I'll give you guys a close up in a moment. Actually, you know what? Let me see if I can zoom in. So in here, now the glitter that I'm using right now is, is a little lighter than what I used over there. That one has some darker bits of green in it. I'm going that wing, but I'll give you guys a close up. And close up is where things are going to go. Wow, you can use this stuff to, to really enhance different parts of your paintings. Whenever I do my paint parties, when I introduce the glitter, people go crazy with glitter. I guess who doesn't love glitter, right? Now look at this. Look at that. Okay. How pretty is that? And you could layer this stuff. Once this is dry, I can come back and add another layer over the top of it, depending on how dense you want this glitter to be. Okay. There we go. Okay, clean it up a little bit. Uh, Nadine, do you mean this this one here on, on the original or the new one or yours or oh because we're because the bleak beaks out of the way is what you mean I think. Let me zoom back out. I think that's what you meant, but I'm not sure. Hopefully that's what you meant. <clears throat> okay. Now some of the red. Same brush, right in here. Okay, here. Feathers. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to do the uh, the blue on the chest. Just scooped up again. Brush is clean. <clears throat> Surface is dry. I mean, birds are iridescent. It's Glitter is perfect. I'm going to take a little round brush here, take a little bit of this crystal glitter, and I'm going to add a touch right to the center of the eye. Actually, you know what? I'm going to cover the entire eye. 
all the black and the white part. See how that looks. All right, let me give you guys a close up. Yeah, so again, what's happening as far as the beak on here, I can, it's just a little lost against the background because it's, um, the colors are a little too close, <clears throat> but also because I would need to take a little bit more of the purple for the background and just come in really tight right up against the outline of the beak. So it would remove all of those lighter, there's a little bit of a lighter areas right around the beak. Once I did that, you'd be able to see it. <clears throat> okay, but it's there. Okay, look at that. Look at that. Okay, how cool is that? So while this area appears drying, I'm going to take some of that. Let's see, how are we doing down here? Is it dry enough for me to add some of that crystal glitter to it? Sure is. So I'm just going to go back to my half inch brush. I'm going to grab some of this. Focusing here on the white part. I'm not going to add any to the inside. Oops, grab some green by accident. There. So look at that. Then lastly, I would take some of that and add it to the wings. It's still a little bit dry, so let me, uh, I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. So it's going to take some more green. Just add more in here. Again, when I layer this stuff, it really makes it stand out. Okay. Let me give it, actually, let me take my blow dryer here. Now, it's always good to have a blow dryer handy. Now I can take this crystal paint. All right. <clears throat> Look at that. <clears throat> so a couple of things. As I mentioned earlier with the beak, I could come around with my purple and just clean up. What's happening is what's distracting and pulling attention away from the beak is that these areas up above it are a little bit lighter. So it gives you the impression that maybe the beak is a little bit larger. But I would take my purple, clean all the, the edges all the way around. Okay. Um, I could also, if I wanted to, do another purple layer all the way around everything to just further refine the edges. What else? I could layer more um, glitter over the top of whatever areas I want to stand out some more. But that is basically it. Okay. Um, I would sign the piece. Right, sign the piece somewhere at the bottom. Let's go ahead and do that now. Normally, when I sign something, I like to take a color that's contrasting against 
uh, the background. For example, I could use blue, I could use green. Um, just some color where it's going to stand out. So just going to take some of my some of my blue, my dark blue, mix it with some of that light blue. I like to sign with my last name. Sometimes people like to do their initials, their artistic name. Well, let me pull back. Too close, too close. Okay. And then somewhere in the bottom corner, is you on, on a bottom corner is what, where these usually get signed. Okay, so there's my little signature. I would flip it around, paint the top edge. Let's get her done. So just that purple, because that's all it is. I'll just come across. And then I would give this a few minutes to dry before I flip it over. Of course, if you're not painting on a canvas, you could have done this whenever you wanted. You could have done it when we painted the front and all the other edges. But if you're on a canvas, you always want to leave this step for last. Okay. And that, my friends, is that. Does anyone have any questions about anything? I know this was a bit of a long session. Uh, lots of uh, lots of little subtleties involved in this one. And again, I just want to I want to say a couple of things. I want to thank all of you guys that stuck all the way through this. All of you that joined me on the live, even if you just stopped by to say hello, I, I thank you. I appreciate it. For those of you that painted along with me, fantastic. I know um, that you know it was a long one, but you guys hung in there. And also for those of you that stretched stretched yourselves a bit, maybe you were partly out of your element, you felt a little bit like, oh, I'm not sure what I'm doing. That is how that is how I learned too. It's one of the quickest ways to learn. Push yourselves. Again, you may not produce something that you really like, but you will learn. If you constantly stay within your comfort zone, you're not going to make advances like you would when you push yourselves. Okay, so kudos to all of you that did that today. I know there's a few on here. I got some messages from some of you that were kind of tentative about joining the session today because of the po uh, possible complexity. But uh, but awesome. You guys, please don't forget to send me pictures of your uh, masterpieces. I want to check those out. Okay? But again, everybody, thank you so much. Good night to all of you. Don't forget the sunflower painting next week. If you want to be added to the um, newsletter where I send out every time I update the calendar for the events, let me know by sending me a message, uh, uh, an email to paintingwithjesse at gmail.com, okay? I do, uh, uh, Barbara, I sure do. I have a link. Uh, let me, do me a favor, um, send me a message here on, on Messenger, Facebook, and I'll send you that link, okay? If you'd like to, for those of you that are interested in getting that uh, glitter without having to mess with, you know, running around looking for it, let me know. If you don't have any and are interested in it, I'll send you links to the stuff that I use. Okay? All right, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have an awesome night or day, depending on where you guys are. Um, some of you, I'm sure it's morning time. Maybe even afternoon. I don't know. Maybe not afternoon. Who knows? Good night, everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye. See you guys next week. Bye-bye.